Of contrasting styles are ready to face off in today's NCAA Division I Lacrosse Championships. The Orangemen of Syracuse are a proven, powerful, offensive scoring machine. If you could stop their big guns, they'd fill up the net with their six shooters. Their tournament success stems from a flashy in-your-face offense and a close defense with an attitude. The fourth-seeded Terrapins of Maryland upset the number one seed with aggressive play, emotional coaching, and a sensational goaltender. A repeat performance could give the hometown fans their first title in 20 years and plenty to cheer about. We're at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland for the NCAA's 25th Anniversary Lacrosse Championships. Today, the Division I Finals, the Maryland Terrapins against the Orangemen from Syracuse. Hi everybody, I'm Lee Felsmo, joined by four-time All-American Quint Kessenick. This should be an exciting matchup. And Quint, when you boil it down to its simplest form, you're talking about big defense on Maryland, big offense on Syracuse. And it looks like Maryland's defense might be able to neutralize Syracuse's offense. If that's the case, look for midfield play between the lines to be the difference. Face-offs, especially crucial in a championship game, as is goaltending. Let's take a look at the Maryland team first. They pride themselves on defense, but they had guys that can score, especially Rob Chomo, their senior leader in that department. Yeah, senior Rob Chomo, 100 104 assists on his career. He's done a great job this season bringing the two freshman attackers, Whipple and Hahn, along. Here he scores a goal on the far side against Hopkins in the semifinals. Kip Folks at the midfield, 27 goals this season. He's got blinding speed. When he goes to the goal, he's going to score. You've got to stop him. You've got to force him to his weak hands. Watch the velocity on this shot against Hopkins. Off of the goalie's face mask, that ball is traveling about 90 miles an hour. And on defense, Dan Radabaugh, potential first-team All-American, did a tremendous job in the semifinals, neutralizing Brian Pocola of Hopkins. He plays a very physical style defense, body on body. Now, of course, when you talk about Syracuse, you talk about offense, they have a history of it, but they are leaning on a freshman, a big guy on the offensive end. Superstar in the making, Casey Powell from Carthage, New York. His statistics speak for himself. This guy is the total package. Here he scores against Virginia in the semifinals. Three goals, four assists in that game. He has stepped up at the midfield. Roy Colsey, 35 goals this season. First team All-American two years in a row. Here he scores. He can run through you, he can run around you, and he is the inspirational leader of this Syracuse Orange. And the defensive trio, Rick Beardsley, Chad Smith, Hans Schmidt, three All-Americans on the same starting defense. They ignite the Syracuse transition attack. They get it going. They, get, they set the tempo for Syracuse. Well, Quint, uh, throughout the game, we'll be able to go to our third partner, Christy Lee, on the sidelines. Well, you know, Maryland has not been here since 1979. They lost that championship game to Johns Hopkins. They're playing with a lot of emotion, and they have the home field advantage. Syracuse, they're no surprise. They've been in the Final Four 13 straight years. They've made eight trips to the championship game. They've taken home five national titles. Now, will Coach Roy Simmons take home his sixth ring, or will Coach from Maryland, Dickie Dell, take home his very first? We're going to find out coming up. All right, Christy Quinton, I'll be back to look at the goalies and then take a look at the opening faceoff. This NCAA 25th Anniversary Lacrosse production is brought to you by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth and by new wax packs. Just add it to soap and water and wax your car while you watch it.
Today's lacrosse championships are brought to you by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. We're back at Burke Stadium, College Park, Maryland. Lee Felsmo, Quinn Kesson, and Christy Lee's on the sideline. Look at the crowd coming in, threatening the 24,000 record crowd. Let's take a look at the goalies. Doherty is going to be a huge factor in this game. Oh, he's the story from Maryland. He had 12 first quarter saves in the semifinals. He set the tone for Maryland. He works off of the crowd. He's a very emotional player, and his teammates build confidence when he plays well. Rogier is maybe underrated. He was sensational in the semis. Rogier Alex for Rogier for Syracuse right there. He's a large goalie, about 195 pounds. He has done very well, very consistent, 60%. He's nice out of the cage. He throws some fine outlet passes. They just need a steady game for Alex Rozier. Maryland needs an outstanding game from Doherty. Maryland needs the series, but they haven't played in recent history, folks. Number eight for Maryland in the red is John Brothers in the white jersey for Syracuse. Kobe Price, there are your colors, red and black, Maryland, white and blue. Syracuse not wearing their familiar arm. It's going to be a loose ball push against Syracuse, so Maryland will go on offense. Over the course of this game, keep your eye on the face-off battle. It'll be Brothers for Maryland against Price for Syracuse. Possession is critical when you want to really slow the tempo down like Maryland does. They'll go to the hoop, no question about it. But they like to control the tempo. Big defense against young freshman attacking for Maryland. Now they get it out to the midfield. You'll see a lot of originate from there. That's Meehlin, their senior co-captain. Maryland's going to attack from the midfielders. They want to avoid Beardsley, Smith, and Schmidt, the close defense for Syracuse. Nealon comes in, almost gets a shot. Cummings applying defense, foul on Cummings. They'll get a free shot. Defense knocks it down. Good play by Chad Smith, 43. Came into the scene, took away the feed from Nealon. Nealon's tough to cover. He's kind of bulky. Number 15 from Maryland. He likes his right hand. Co coach Roy Simmons in his 25th year here. Syracuse has only had three coaches in their entire coaching history. His father coached at Syracuse for 40 years. And Coach Dick Adele from Maryland. Looking for his first national championship, Maryland, in the finals, first time since 1979. Andy Dell in the finals for the first time, period. He was in a soccer final, coached soccer at the University of Baltimore years ago before he went to Army, then to Maryland. Here is Maryland, Rose going into a rotation. They start with that heavy right-handed shot, and they get first one. Bullen, number 12 with the right-handed rocket. Charles Bullen. And he can light it up. Watch the velocity behind this shot. He is a man-up specialist. This is the only role he plays for this Maryland team. He comes in off the bench during their extra man unit. Here he is. We give this kid this kind of time and room, and he is going to stick it. That time being Rogier over the near shoulder. This kid can light it up 90 miles an hour or, or better, off from the wrist. Syracuse with a lot of flash and offense. Maryland, maybe I think from the Final Four experience, the best opportunistic shooting. They don't take many bad shots. And they get the face off. Brothers comes up with it, trying to get inside. They lose it for a moment. Here comes Syracuse. Transition play, Chad Smith looking. He'll take a shot if he gets a chance. Smith being double teamed. And the ball goes back down the turf, and the Turks turn it around. Great double team by Reese. Got a whistle after the play. It's going to be a push against Maryland. Smith had a teammate open. He had Price on the far side. They were working a five on four. Watch the double teaming defense. You can see in the background, number 12 for Syracuse, he's wide open. Smith has got to give that up. That's the push right there by Evans. Maryland, a very scrappy team. They are not afraid to challenge the loose balls. Evans and Reese, the double team. Syracuse gets it back. Let's see if Pavlovich is brother play here at Maryland. He's got possession. Try to beat Casey Power, Quint, right on the crease. Looking inside. Kevin Mitch, really the quarterback from behind the goal. He'll be covered by Elstrom, their ex-high school teammate. Matchups now showing themselves. Look at Syracuse trying to bring it right into the crease. And here comes Elstrom. Giving it up. Watch the fast break. Evans, he's got speed. He's got ripple. Down to the big shot. Hahn. No. Hahn was wrapped up by Beardsley. Hesitated for a moment. So far, Maryland put in two pretty good shots. They connected with one. They still have possession. 1-0 so far, early in the, in the game. Maryland leads. Hahn has got a nose for the goal. 32 goals in his freshman season. And Whipple, the other attacker, number one for Maryland, the ACC Rookie of the Year. Both freshmen. Hahn's the only guy went that didn't start all 14 games this year. Back door, Hahn can't put it through. It was a redirect. He just missed it. You know, there's been some rain this weekend. Quint, how is the field? The field's slick, and, and we've seen players this weekend uh, have some problems with the Chomo on that last play, had some problems. Uh, it's okay around the cages, but when you get into the lower corners, because of the crown of the field, the water drains, 
generally towards the sidelines, it's a little more slick. So a lot of pressure on Rogier early on. Syracuse now brings it back. Here's Colt. Everybody's candidate for player of the year. He is a stud at midfield. And it's shot. Been saved by Dougherty for his first block. Dabovic gets control. Colsey again. Ostron tried to go across crease to Sullivan. Maryland knocks it down, but Syracuse gets possessed. Ram Nimi with some nice stick work, deflecting that ball out of bounds. Doherty with the first save. It's so crucial as a goaltender to get the first save. There it is, Nimi has his stick in the passing lane. That's one of the reasons why defensive players use that six foot long shaft. Kavovic controls behind now. Giving it out front, Syracuse working it very carefully. Marcy, Sher Syracuse showed uncommon patience in their semifinal game. Playing Virginia, Colsey. So hard to get the stick from him. Doesn't look big, but he plays huge. Ball knocked down, finally put on the surface by Nimi. Nimi, the young kid, played Colsey perfectly. Here comes Maryland, they can get the fast break going. Bonani, back into the center of the field. Oh, the giving go by Chomo, he couldn't bring it, bring it back. Hans Smith, Beardsley, they're all there. Big hit by Nalen, that's the kind of Maryland hit that you can expect. You can see the hustle by Maryland. There were more red jerseys on that portion of the field than there were white. That is a signature. Take a look at the hits here. Physical style, Licamelli gets decked by Nealon. And here's Han. Han. Han will step on the line to Syracuse will control. Nealon, no stranger to physical play. He likes to scrap, very intense. And Dick Adele's team generally at Maryland play that style of cross. He loves that style. He loves big hearted players. He wants you to go 100%. Bring it to you physically, and he does get that effort out of his player. Chad Smith having a tough time on the far side. Transfer from Army now has control. This long stick unit, all All-Americans, like to take it to the hoop. They can all score. That's why you see the defenseman down there. They've got the green light also to go coast to coast. You know, a lot of teams, they're coached when the long stick brings the ball over, give it up, get back and play defense. This team, they've got the green light. They can go coast to coast, and they have, and they do with success. Quint, different look for Casey Powell, number 22, with the ball. Long socks here. He wore short socks in the semifinal, and he wore these long socks uh, earlier in the season. He has a different look, I guess, depending on his mood. That number 22 is a storied number in Syracuse lacrosse tradition. Gary Gate wore 22, and then Charlie Lockwood. Number 22 has been an All-American every year the last eight years. Goal! Shot by Cavalier, who comes around and just beats Dougherty. He goes low on him. Nobody picked him up on the slide. We've got a 1-1 game. Well, coming in, you knew Cavett can feed, but he's also proved that he can dodge to the goal. Here he gets a step on Elfstrom, who's overplaying behind the goal, and Doherty comes off the inside pipe. That's a cardinal sin when you're a goaltender. You want to stay on that inside pipe, much like in hockey when a player sneaks from around the back. Being a left-hander, he probably feels a little cramped with the stick on that left-handed pipe. He came out to use it a little more. Ball goes right underneath him. Yeah, he slid his body well, but he didn't see the ball. He guessed. Brothers number eight facing off. He was huge in the game against Hopkins in the semifinal against one of the best, Jacobs. He nullified him, and here he's doing well in the second faceoff for Maryland. Jumbo looks immediately into the crease area. Maryland player going off is Brian Reese, long stick from the wing. Maryland will show patience offensively. Maryland actually three faceoffs, none for Syracuse so far. Maryland likes to set it up with their half-court offense. They like to attack the short sticks. They look for matchups. They specifically target a player on the other team to take to the goal. And this is a good matchup. Nealon against Toby Price. Toby Price will be facing off all day long. Maryland would like to wear him out. That's right. They want to keep him on the field as much as possible, take him behind the goal, make him play some defense. Toby Price, his teammate who faces off with him, Signor, had an injury in the semifinal. Broke his wrist. He'll be out. Maryland with a rocket that Rozier pulls down. Great block. Shot by Kent Fox, picked up by Neal, he's such a heady player. Kent Fox has got a rocket from there. He likes to go behind. Into Ripple, can't get an angle. No angle for Ripple. He gets smothered by the great defense of Syracuse. Huey had no angle and still tried to put it back in the net. Nice body control by Whipple. He was running past the cage, managed to stop. Didn't get a shot off. Rozier played his angles perfectly, and the Syracuse defense converged on him. You can see how Maryland, offensively, they look to draw the double team and then move it to their open teammate. That time, it was very successful, although the angle shot uh, didn't have enough there to beat Rozier. Good back to it. That's a lot of the for Maryland. Now back to 
Casey Powell and company. Being shattered by Rada Ball, the best defenseman from Maryland. This is a key matchup today. Watch this one. 25 against 22. Rada Ball puts it on the ground. Dougherty gets it in the stick, and Maryland comes up successful in this battle. If Powell's going to have success, he's got to use his quickness and speed. You're not going to dodge through Rada Ball. You're going to have to go around him. Hit Fox with a little bit of space. Watch him accelerate. Fox, number 13. He can shoot. And a great save by Rozier. Ball still loose out in front. Maryland trying to get possession and a push call here. With a loose ball. But a guess on Syracuse. Goes back to Maryland. You could see the blinding speed of Kip Fultz there. Getting the ground ball and accelerating past Roy Colsey, who's perhaps the best midfielder in the country. So that gives you an indication. 4-4-40 speed for Kip Fultz of Maryland. We're about halfway through the first quarter. The game tied at one. Maryland scored first for kind of an answer for Syracuse. All the way to the back door for this one. Todd Evans can't. Oh, he finally pulls it down. Look at the great defensive work by Hans Schmidt. Schmidt gets helped defensively by Potopoulos, number 27. These loose balls are key. Let's see if Maryland starts second people. Syracuse really put three hits on Maryland. Mike Wittick's going to be called for the push here. Not a very smart play. That's a blatant pushing violation from behind. Maryland controls. Syracuse, though, Q, have shown that they are ready to make some contact, too. They are not backing down. Very physical team when they want to be. Oh, they will throw the lumber or titanium. These shafts are made of titanium. They're not afraid to play intense physical defense. Big check by Chad Smith. Took it right out of Whipple's stick. Whipple, the, the freshman. Smith, the veteran. Here comes Smith. He can shoot. He will. And a big block by Doherty. Now, Smith is caught down on this end of the field. He could be burned, but Syracuse gets possession. Half of it races it down. That's the running gun style that is so trademark reminiscent of the offense over the last 10 years for Syracuse. Anybody has the green light to go to the goal. Doherty looks sharp. That was a tough save, especially coming out of that long stick. It's often deceptive. The ball tends to come out at different angles, but he was up to the test. Marcy now. Lachapelle gets it to the front. Good cut by Mark Fietta. Number nine, watch him in the white jersey for Syracuse. Marcy now behind the cabinet. Kevin would like to be behind, controlling from there. Very heavy feeder of the young guys. A freshman came that really made an impact last year. Being pushed around by Elston. This is Licamelli, four goals in the semifinals against Virginia. Nick Licamelli, player coming into that game, only had 12 on the season. Career game. If Syracuse is going to have success, they need to have scoring from some of their complementary midfielders. LaChapelle with the check, penalty. Ball finally hits the grass, so Syracuse will go man up for the first time. Let's take a look at these two teams and how they stack up. Goals per game, Syracuse with a little advantage there. Shots per game, again, Syracuse with the advantage. Goals allowed, Maryland with the advantage. Face-offs even, an extra man. Look at the Syracuse, 46% on extra man. They'll have a, an opportunity right here to get their second goal on an extra man. Watch La Chapelle, he'll draw the foul here. It's a beautiful check. The, actually, the foul was prior to that check. That's called a back brain slap. Syracuse now got a high-powered offense that scores one out of every two chances on average. They go back to a 1-3-2 now in a rotation. Colsey sliding through, trying to draw the defense, sucking up into the middle. Working cabinet on the one side, around to Marcy. Got him up top. He's going to want to have the left-hander shoot. But there's a right-handed shot in a goal. Well, the word was left-hander shoot for the left-handed goalie, but a beautiful shot and a goal by number 19. Carcatera, Carcatera, sophomore from Yorktown High School. He's an extra man specialist. We've seen Bullen score for Maryland. Well, Carcatera plays the same role. He's just a tremendous shooter. He's got 13 goals on the season. Time and room, and you can see Doherty a little confused on this. There might have been a little screen here as the Maryland defenseman rushed out to cover Carcatera. I think he used him as a screen. 14 on the season. That's his role. Carcaterra comes in off the bench, takes a couple shots every game, and that's what he's good at. He's got an outstanding shooting percent, 54% on the season. Just got a little bit better. Two to one, Syracuse leads. You can notice the Maryland defenseman that was in the hole on that ducking on that shot was so hard. Maybe had a chance to block it, but the velocity was so scary, he had to duck down. Here comes the faceoff. Dockery picks it right up. Beautiful job by Toby Price to get the faceoff. First one of the day for them, and then to take it down and threaten Dockery. 
in the semifinal game, Dave Signor, midfielder for Syracuse, was injured. So Toby Price is not going to be spelled by any other teammates. He's better watch his energy. We've seen him on the field quite a bit. That could provide an advantage, really, for Allen in the late stages of the game. That's not the, the other problem with that. That's not the first man they've lost in that position. No, Jeff Schusler actually, mid-season, uh, tore his knee tore his knee up pretty good against Hobart. So they're without two of their top three face-off specialists. Zip Falls had the ball out front against Paul Sullivan, a short stick. That's a good matchup, but he gives it up. Now, they're electing Syracuse is to go short stick on Neyland Fox. That is really a challenge. Shot in, close off the iron. Wide open was Mike Crawford. Neyland gave it to him very quickly, and he was wide open on the wing. Nobody played him, and he redirects that one, hits the iron. Coach Adele substituting early for Maryland Crawford at seeing some action. We'll see Hill Gartner, number 43, who had such a tremendous game in the semifinals, but there he is on the sideline with his offensive coordinator, Scott Marr. Potopolis now the long stick on Fox, so they put a long stick on Fox after the whistle. Maryland controlling, being very deliberate. DeAndrea now is the ball, number 44. He's got a short stick against him. The matchup they want here is Nealon against Cummings. This is not the matchup right there with DeAndrea. DeAndrea doesn't have the speed to get, to get by with it. I now Chomo, the veteran. Beardsley, the best guy, takeaway man, working in a big save. Rozier just gobbled it up. Here comes Hughes. Cummings against Falks. Doesn't have a break, so Cummings goes off the field. Fresh legs on. Cummings stays on. So does Neal. They'll be a little bit tired. Let's see if they isolate defensively on them. Rozier plays such solid angle play. That time he took that one off the chest and then caught it. That's his best skill. Defenseman came in. Beardsley made like he was going out wide over the middle of the field as a defenseman. They couldn't see him. Now something to be open. There he is. Beardsley went down. They faked like the defenseman was going off. Nealon followed him to the sideline, and Beardsley just came right down the middle. Nobody was on him. Great play by Syracuse. Didn't get the goal. Great ball. Takes it out of the freshman's hand. Number one defenseman against the number one attackman. Pro Maryland crowd, as you might expect. Loving the work of Radeball. Radeball getting the best of power right now. He just skipped him. Twice now we've seen Radeball take the ball away from the freshman. Power has got to move as much as possible. He's standing still. He's giving Radeball the opportunity to throw his vast array of checks. On Schmidt against Crawford. Crawford tries to get in position to shoot. He's in the crease area. They get it right back to Rozier. And here comes Syracuse. Two to one lead. Three minutes left in the first quarter. Lee Felsmo, Quint Kesnick, Christy Lee's on the sideline. Division one final for NCAA lacrosse. Kalovic controls. Syracuse has shown a lot of dimension in these final four format against Virginia. They showed a very patient offense. Backer with an easy block. He didn't get possession. Watch out. Trouble. He's up by himself. He's got to get rid of it. And he's not out of bounds. He didn't really have any help. He elected to take it out. NHL action continues Thursday night on ESPN when the Chicago Blackhawks take on the Detroit Red Wings in game one of the Western Conference Finals. Catch all the excitement, 7.30, Thursday night on ESPN. Doherty is very good out of the cage. Sometimes he makes poor decisions. That time he should have circled and tried to find a teammate. Uh, nice job by Syracuse there, taking the correct angle and forcing him out of bounds. Good check from behind by Maryland to get the ball back down the ground. That was Reese. Syracuse to great speed, picks it back up. Paul Sullivan, far side to Colsey. Penalty on the play. Syracuse can't believe it. It's going to be a, something loose ball against Syracuse. Actually, the foul's going to be against Maryland. What Syracuse is angry about is that the whistle was blown exactly. Right. Licamelli scooped the ball up the ground, uh, off the turf, and then the whistle was blown. Syracuse had a little transition going there. They had a fast break opportunity. Take a look at some of the coaching action going on. Coach Adele, tremendous job this year. Maryland came into the season ranked eighth. A lot of people think, thought that was an over-ranking, and yet they've surprised everyone this season. Solid all along, playing their best ball now in the playoffs. They were only 7-6 last year. This year, a chance to win it all. Each team has had one opportunity on extra man. Each team has scored on that opportunity. This is the second chance for Syracuse to lead by one. Back door, Marcy just misses an open target. And chased out of bounds by Maryland. They get position. Brian Reese with great speed. Nice hustle by Reese. Doherty fortunate that Morrissey missed the cage. It's typical Syracuse man-up offense where they work one side, kick it to the back side where they've got a two-on-one. Morrissey does not miss many of those 
He does not miss many of those from, from that angle. And offensively, that's a, a really a cardinal sin not to back up that shot, especially on man up. You've got an advantage speed-wise. At least you know it's coming. You see it. You've got to get back there. Here comes Syracuse. Maryland having a tough time, Quint, getting the clear. They've got to really tighten up their clearing. Watch out. Inside Dacker with a huge block. Open shot right in his face by Cummings. But again, Syracuse gets it back. They've had a lot of minutes on offense. Teams leading strength. With it. Whittick's primarily a defensive specialist. He will stay on occasionally and play offense. He had a goal in the semifinals. Now he'll substitute out of the box. Again, another defensive player who has the green light to go to the cage if the opportunity arises. Well, Cole is on the field. He wanted the ball right away. Let's see what he does as he gets matched up against La Chapelle. La Chapelle sliding up the play Colby. Gets room, double teeth. Somebody's open on the back side. They move it up top. Hard shot from Fietta. They're giving Dougherty a lot of credit. They know he's good, so Quint, they're shooting some real fine shots toward the outside of the goal. Yeah, they are being a little fine. When you know you're playing against a solid goaltender, you tend to uh, aim for the pipes, aim for the corners. They don't want to give them any confidence. Cummings will control the ball, going against the short stick defense of Banani. Good check. Made that shot totally ineffective. Easy pick up for Dougherty. Now here's where they've got to really tighten their game up. They have not cleared very well. Syracuse rides them hard, and more often than not, they've been losing possessions on this clear. Ball down again. It's going to kill Maryland if they can't get the ball into their attack zone. Flag down behind the play. Syracuse doing an excellent job riding the Maryland, Maryland clear. We haven't seen Maryland play offense in about the last three minutes. Take a look at the replay. That's a late hit right there. Right in front of the official and the Syracuse bench. It's a one-minute violation. Not exactly what you want if you're a fan of Maryland lacrosse. You're down by a goal. You play defense now for the last five minutes, and you have to kill off another penalty. And, of course, they shoot about 46% is their number, so that's one out of every two chances, and they've done just that. They've had two chances. They've scored once. They'll probably hold on to the ball because there's only nine seconds left in the quarter. If they hold the ball, it's not in the air, they will have possession when the second quarter starts. The physical play of Maryland at times pays off. They get a lot of ground balls, but at times it can, it can hurt, they hurt, they hurt themselves with some of those penalties. We'll see here in the second quarter. All right, two to one, Syracuse with a slim lead against the great defense of Maryland. When we come back, it'll be an extra man play as we start the second quarter. The attack's got to come down and help them out. They're not getting any help from right here. None. Syracuse steal, Maryland save. Yeah. Maryland's pace here. Low score. Stadium, the 25th anniversary season for NCAA lacrosse. 
and what a weekend it's been. Record crowds in the semifinals, maybe a record today. Look at the takeaway for Syracuse G. Fotopoulos challenging every inch of real estate, creates the turnover, and now Syracuse is into their up-tempo up transition game. This is Marcy on the near side. This is Inside. a replay of earlier on. This is showing some great stop and great defense in transition. Exactly. Doherty making the save there for Maryland. He's got six saves. Now we're back to live act as we start the second quarter. This will be the third extra man opportunity for Syracuse. They're one for two coming into this one. Maryland controlling the tempo cue, but they're not going to win the game unless they get more minutes on the other end. Exactly. They're playing too much defense. Anytime you do that against the Syracuse squad, they're going to score a goal. Starting the 1-3-2, Powell now works himself behind. There's the ball to Powell. He pushes in to get the defensive attention. Rocket shot goes wide. That was the one that really hit last time. Carcaterra scored on that shot. Carcaterra is strictly a shooter. His high school stats, in high school at Yorktown, he had 90 goals and four assists. So that gives an indication he's not looking to feed. He's looking to stick the back of the goal. John Desco, assistant coach, said they'd be looking for the left-handed shot. He was kidding us because the first two shots have been to the right-handed side against the left-handed goalie. Here he comes, Doherty. They've got to clear better to have a chance to win this game. This looks easy. Middle of the field, somebody wide open. Here it comes. This could be a shot against Rozier. Big save. Ball stuck in his stick. Team's all even. That was a chance. He put that one on the ground. It's hard to read. They put it right in his chest. Especially on a wet grass field, the ball skims. Poor shooting by Maryland. I think it's plagued him early. Rozier is solid in the cage, but the good shot will go. He's not moving anywhere. If you hit him, he's going to make the save. Exactly. They've hit him in the chest three or four times. Make him move, shoot towards the outer side. Take a look at the first quarter stats. Shots. Decided advantage for Syracuse. Ground ball is about even. Faceoffs. Maryland winning the faceoffs, but they are losing the time of possession battle. And that'll pay off. It's more tiring to play defense than it is to play offense. I don't think they can ask this much from Doherty for four straight quarters. They've got to put more minutes down on this end. And again, the shooting selection, if it improves, they have a chance to beat Rozier. Rozier had a shaky playoff last year, but that was his first shot at it. This year, the team really believes, and he does too, that he's the man enough to do the job. Fox takes the rocket well over the goal. Whipple backs it up. Whipple number one, one of the freshmen who looked at Kip Fox. Honorable mention, All-American last season. Folks transferred from Essex Community College. Really not recruited very much out of high school, but he's emerged, improved athletically, and as his lacrosse player stick still wise. Maryland does not get a good chance to beat Rozier. They give it up again. Here comes Syracuse, leading by one. They continue to put minutes on the board in the offensive end. Maryland asks a lot. They throw that one away. Bad pass by Syracuse that came down. Chance Smith just missed Marcy. Yeah, Marcy's got to swing closer for a flip pass there, or they got to communicate better. Roy Simmons on the sideline looking for his sixth national championship. He owns all the coaching records. He's in the Hall of Fame. A little talk to you in the paper this morning about he possibly retiring after this year. I don't know if that's uh, to be taken seriously, but he certainly has the record book filled with great pages of memories. Five championships. And one of the most interesting interesting coaches in all of sports. The guy, uh, a little eccentric, but, but always a story around the rest Great shot inside. And it blocked around the feet of Rogier. They couldn't really get a clean shot off. And right away, Syracuse brings it back. Pushing hard. Fotopoulos gets it back. Fotopoulos stays down. And here comes Beardsley. Two long sticks players down there. Two defensive players winding the ball. Shot by Whittick was not much of a test for Doc, but he's in trouble. He's out of the crease. Flips it up, watch out. Kip Folks can't get it cleanly. Morrissey does. Nice hustle by Morrissey. He was behind the goal when that play started. Swung all the way up top and got the ground ball. Good feed at the far side. Watch out, Fotopoulos is being caught down the long sticks. In the crease on Casey Powell. No, in and out. Elkstrom caught the ball out of the crease, and as a defenseman, when you get possession out, you're not allowed to step in. He did. He gathered that rebound. Watch the save here. Keep your eye on the rebound right here. Elfstrom will catch it, and he'll step. Actually, I didn't see him step in there, but the official had a better angle. Well, maybe he didn't. It didn't look like he stepped into me. <laughs> we had a pretty good angle on too. Yeah. It goes very quick. We're seeing it in replay slow motion. He's not. If he steps in, that was the call. The ball goes the other way. Not a whole lot of transition for Syracuse, but a lot of minutes on the clock, and that'll take its toll. I don't think you can count Doc, but he'd take this much 
offense all game long. Look at Melly with a nice split dodge. He's a predominantly right-handed player. That time he changed it up a little, came back towards left, and Doherty made a, a fine save. Doherty's a lefty. Sometimes that can be difficult for shooters when they're used to playing against right-handed players. Played his high school ball at the Episcopal Academy near Philadelphia, PA. Elder, number 38, and McGuire in. Elder now, right now, the long stick against Posey. Posey wants him. Posey puts it in the back of the net. Forget it, Syracuse fans on the far side. Here comes Maryland. Big run to see if they get the transition. Trumbo looking for a cutter. Great settling influence. Trumbo drawing Beardsley as the defenseman, and he is tough. Beardsley matches up well with Chomo because Chomo doesn't have outstanding speed. He cannot run away from the checks of Beardsley. Right now, Beardsley winning that matchup. In close, missed the fight from the far side. Todd Evans showing good speed. Ball goes out of bounds, but chased out by the Syracuse defense, and Han Schmidt gets a possession. Yeah, Han Schmidt also showing good speed on the far side. Dickie Dell just excited to be here. Obviously wants to win this one, but we've talked about what a surprise it was for Maryland to go this far. This team has done everything perfectly. They don't have as deep a roster as most squads. We talked about the starting 10 cue. Only Hahn was a change. All nine other guys started every game of the 14 games. Hahn starts the third game and never leaves either. They know their role on this Maryland team. Goes here. All the way up. Check from behind and it took a great save by Dockery. Now nobody's in the goal. Can they get the ball back? They cannot. Rogier is out of the goal. He has to go back 100 yards to the other net. That would have been a first in NCAA Division Final. A goalie going coast to coast for the goal, but Dockery with a spectacular save. Dockery saving cue. The reason he comes in, we'll talk about it in a second. Dockery trying to come in and make another big save. Kind of looking for him behind. The reason that goalie comes all the way is that Maryland's giving him, they're coming everybody else and saying, come on up, we don't think you're that good out of the goal. You can bring it on up. And he did. Big save by Dockery on Marcy. Look at him. Dockery's cheering the crowd on, saying, let's go. This is where it gets dangerous. He feeds off the crowd. Everything's going well for Maryland except time of possession. If you're a Maryland fan, you need them to have the ball down that end. Edel wants more minutes on the clock in the offensive end. For all the great defense, there's still pressure when the white team has the ball. Syracuse is electric on the offense. Only two to one. Coming into this game, it looked as if it would be about a 15 to 14 game, but this is a lot much low scoring than we anticipated. Double team, balls on the ground. Can they get it? Started with Elstrom double teaming. The ball was loose. Pushing violation against Maryland. So all the little calls going against Maryland. The home crowd here. Actually, it's not a home crowd, but it is a home crowd. Home state crowd, for sure. And that's uh, definitely pays some dividends. Syracuse has a great group of fans. Nobody better than the Syracuse group as fans is... Uh, patient as they are, as avid as they are, and determined to stay with their team. They bust down here from upstate New York and tailgate, spend the whole weekend at the championship weekend. Syracuse again gets another possession. This is going to take its toll, obviously, if it keeps up. It's a lopsided time of possession. No goals in almost 12 minutes of this game. We're about nine minutes left in the first half. Double team by Maryland trying to get something going. The ball on the ground. Now they're in trouble. Colsey's got it. He looks up front. Colsey pushing in. He's double teamed by Dockery between the legs. Now if they get out, there'll be a fast break. No, they slow down. Dockery gives it off to the wing. Ray the ball. That's not the time for a one-handed between the legs shot right there by Roy Colsey. Not in a tight national championship game. No way. Great move for Colsey to drive the right side. But if he took a great shot there, he would have been in good shape. Don't forget, ESPN's got great baseball Wednesday night. And we'll tell you about that in just a moment. But right now, let's take a break. We'll come back to our game. Two to one, Syracuse leading eight minutes left in the second quarter. Do we have any assist numbers? Any assist numbers? Yeah, show us this one-handed shot. This is ridiculous. Oh, he gets in his face, doesn't he? Yeah, he weighs already down. Oh, he says, yeah, yeah, get that shit going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
We coming back with that replay? Syracuse leads 2-1. to one. Goalies are a big part of today's game. This is Rozier for Syracuse earlier, taking the ball coast to coast. Maryland really gave him the center of the field. They say, hey, Alex Rozier, go down and score a goal, and he almost does. Watch the save now by Doherty right there. You rarely see that. On the opposite end, this is Roy Colsey. Watch this one-handed between the leg shot. The score is 2-1. to one. If he turns and puts two hands on the stick, he can get a great shot, and Doherty says, no way, not today. Get that out of my face. That's right, maybe against somebody else, folks. Really not a smart play by Colby. Well, it was, like, it was a smart play through 80% of it. And like you said, if he takes a good shot, he's there. Good shot on Rozier, it's a tie game at two. Maryland taking advantage of every opportunity, putting pressure on Rozier, it's all tied. Hill Gartner, the substitute for Maryland on attack. He's tearing it up in the playoffs. Hill Gartner, two goals in the quarterfinals against Notre Dame. Against Hopkins, had three goals and one assist. And here he is, Hill Gartner. Nothing fancy, gets it done though. Watch the placement on the shot. He swings up right-handed, turns. Not the fastest shot, but down low in the corner. That's a tough save. Those kinds of shots will be successful against Rozier. And Quinton, that's one of the first. Uh, where they haven't shot too many, period. And they haven't shot too many low. So you're right, those low shots obviously giving some trouble. It's an unsure footing. It's uneven, it's slick some places, it's thick other places. So the goalie doesn't know how to quite read those bounce shots. Maryland getting the face off. They have controlled there. They've won four out of five. If they can only get possession, this is where Syracuse has been shining. Syracuse keeps the ball on the ground. They can't find it. Ball locked into somebody's glove. I think it was stuck in, in Han for Maryland. His glove is going to be an illegal touch because he touched it with his hand. So Syracuse will control. He did not touch that, touch that intentionally, but the ball just Got stuck, really got stuck in the glove, nothing you can do about it. They didn't even know where it was for a moment. Here comes Syracuse, Toby Price clearing. Getting pushed from behind. And now Rag by the long stick. Look at Melly. Look at Melly, gets it knocked from behind. Here comes Maryland, but can they clear it? This has been a problem all day. Syracuse ragging them. Boost it up. They're okay. Hill Gardner with a smart play to help out. The attack hadn't helped out all day. They did there. Here comes Kip Fox inside. Finished it. Matt Hall, the freshman finisher from the Speedster Fox. Maryland leads. Three to two. Maryland, they'll sting you in transition. You make a mistake, they'll sting you. This play started with Elfstrom getting the ball up the field. Here's Fox. He reads this play perfectly. Watch Hahn. Wide open in the middle. Nothing fancy on that shot. High to low between the legs of Rozier. Elfstrom did a great job clearing the ball. Here's the tail end of it. Look at the placement between the legs. Poor Syracuse defense. You've got to make up your mind defensively there whether you're going to play the ball or play Hahn. They did neither. The freshman's got 33 goals, and we've got a delayed penalty coming up against Syracuse. So there'll be a short one man. You'll see Beardsley go up to take the face off a long stick in the middle because they can get possession. Maryland and go down and have a six on five. If Beardsley, the long stick, gets possession, Simmons a little bit concerned, then Syracuse can take it into their offensive end and the penalty is over. Syracuse has to get a possession to get out of this penalty. Right now, Maryland leads by one. They have control of the faceoff. Let's see if Beardsley could be a big help. If you can't leave the box, nobody can go across that line to possession. Syracuse gets it, Riddick has possession, but now they need to get it all the way back to their offensive zone to release the penalty. Matopoulos. Big drag, he has to get in the box, he's not there yet. Now he is. Penalty released, all even. So Syracuse does it when they have to. Timeout called by Syracuse, a possession timeout. Well done by Roy Simmons. Beardsley pulls it out, they get possession, bring it down, release the penalty. The teams will be in even strength. Maryland, one goal lead, stunning the Archman.
Just to go left and reach the concourse, if you're using the lower half of the second to three through ten, go down and follow the left way at field level. Coming back to anything special? Once again, no pass out. Don't miss Wednesday night baseball. This Wednesday night, doubleheader. Dodgers against the Phillies in game one. Yankees against the Mariners in game two. It all starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. I tell you what, this could be a record crowd, folks. We're back at Bird Stadium. The record's 24,000 plus for the finals. This could be a record. We maxed this place out two days ago in the semis, Quint. It was 30,100 and change. We're getting close to that today. This place was rocking on Saturday when Maryland upset Johns Hopkins 16 to 8. They annihilated the undefeated Blue Jays. Teams at even strength. Watch out, Colsey Rocket. Big save by Doherty. That is the reason, folks. Maryland is so scary. Syracuse hasn't scored in 13 minutes. And it's because of that man. Yeah, and the key to Doherty's game right there, I don't know if he got that off the stick, but he moves his feet so well in the cage. I think he took it off his right foot. He's moving it around Can't a little save. bit. The goal is a big goal, six foot by six foot. Your stick is not going to get the job done. You've got to slide your body from pipe to pipe. 36 square feet, the body, your body might take that from your shot of 10 square feet. Try to get in front of Fiena. And Dougherty again with a big save. He's got possession. Outlet pass. He's got a lot of save to keep that team in going. Nimi. Hill Gartner, back door, Chomo! Four goals for Maryland. It all starts with their goalie making the easy save against Prieta. Nice outlet pass to Nimi. Maryland can sting you in the transition. Watch the save. Time and room. He's got time to see the shot coming all the way. Controls his rebound. Here's Nimi inside. Hillgartner. Watch the look on the backside. Chomo all alone. A lot of patience by Rob Chomo. Known for his goal scoring abilities. Look at Rick Beardsley staring at the ball. Cardinal Sin defensively. You've got to both see the man with the ball and your man. That time Beardsley got caught staring at Hillgartner. Chomo snuck in behind him. Two goal lead. The first two goal lead for Maryland in this game. First two goal lead by anybody. Three unanswered goals for Maryland. They were down two to one to Syracuse. Didn't have much possession time, but that's changing. Another shot off the pipe. Maryland almost made it a three goal game. They got possession. Take away artist, the All-Americans. Beardsley right here, getting a little bit antsy, waiting around. Chomo, somebody behind all by themselves. Hill Gardner's by himself. Oh, he couldn't pick it up. Maryland has scored three unanswered goals here, and one of the reasons for it is Chomo, excuse me, Hill Gardner has come in for Whipple, number one. So they've taken the freshman out, brought in Hillgartner, who's been the go-to guy. He's been hot in the playoffs, and it's paying off. Three in a row. Whipple was a, a big part of their offense coming into the playoffs. In the big games, maybe not having as much numbers as he did during the season. Hahn's been a great finisher in the big games. But Whipple, maybe a little too young, too green. Big shot for Maryland, and Bill Rohl not really testing Rozier. Now, anytime you drop your stick low like that and shoot the ball low, you telegram your shot. That's an easy save for a goalie of Rozier's ability. Chad Smith usually gets away from Hillgard. Now Smith will cause some problems down here. Oh, a fast pass misses. Watch out. Transition for Maryland. Can they move it? Hillgard will start. Looks around. Now he tries to force a slide. Syracuse got back beautifully, so they'll settle it down. In the middle, trying to find the crashing Pat McGuire, who came down across the middle and really kind of threw it away. Yeah, another chance for minutes of possession, which would be critical, and they throw the ball away. Chris Farmer forced that pass inside. Generally, when your team's on a run like that, there's more of a tendency to force the plays. you got to value possession of the ball, especially in a transition game. You can look at Coach Adele letting Farmer have it, saying, be patient. If we don't have the fast break, we don't have the numbers game, be patient. Let's work our offense. Rozier again coming out of the goal, and nobody's picking him up. This could be trouble. They've got to give him pressure. Big check. Now there's trouble. Nobody in the net for Syracuse on the other end. Crowds on their feet. Can Maryland make it a three-goal game? No goalie. Roy Colsey's inside. Beardsley picks it off, and they dodge a bullet. 4 on 3 the other way. Beardsley gives it up. Beardsley stays there. Cavalier rockets one off and wide. Whoa. 
Roy Colsey went, went into the goal to play goalie. Number three, the midfielder. He was going to take the shot, and Beardsley picked it off. The strategy for Maryland is to let Rozier run the ball off the field. That time, it really worked well. You can see how tired he was after that play. And Syracuse counterattacked with a four on three. Not a bad philosophy. He's more of a football build. Scores in the last 16 minutes plus, Syracuse is. So the defense of Maryland really stepping up. They've got to do it two days out of three. They did it against Hopkins. Can they do it against Syracuse? Big check in the middle of the field. Hill Gardner, though, comes up. That's been the key to the clearing. Hill Gardner coming up in the attack zone and helping out. Earlier, that wasn't happening. Four on three. Rozier picks it up. Beautiful anticipation. Nice outlet pass also. That's one of the strengths of his game. He sees the field very well. Casey Powell showing speed. Into the middle. Couldn't handle. Tablet had an easy shot, possible goal, and couldn't handle the ball. Nealon's going to get a penalty in addition to whatever else happened. And this is going to be costly for Maryland. This is going to be costly because Maryland's playing very well right now. That game, the transition style is up and back and up and back, and you cannot lose your cool here. I don't and know what happened on the front side of that, but you know in sports, the first hit is rarely seen. It's the second hit that's seen. Watch the replay. You can see Kavovic get a little antsy. That's not a foul right there. Okay, right there, that is a foul. Any contact to the opponent's helmet, if you've got a glove or stick up to the head, referees are cutting back on that. That's an instantaneous foul. They've got to call it. The problem is the first hit is rarely seen, or sometimes seen, but more often than not, keep fighting. Now the focus is on you. Nealon waited a little too long. All the refs were looking as he made that last contact to the head. This is not the kind of guy that's known for unsportsmanlike plays. He's about as classy as they come. Caught up in the game. And now they're down by, let's see, they'll start uh, one man down. Got five guys on the field. Looks like it's going to be one man down for two minutes. Two minute penalty. Referees have the ability to make it uh, more than one minute. You rarely see it, but they did here. Syracuse. They've got one goal in three attempts. Doherty comes up big. Now they've got to take some time off the clock. Maryland does. Another big save for Doherty. He only has four seconds in there. Now he's in trouble. He's got to come out looking for help. Throws it out of bounds. Clearing, killing the Maryland squad. In that situation, Maryland is clearing with six players versus five for Syracuse. Oh, excuse me, versus six for Syracuse. Man on man. Doherty gets in trouble there. The best thing for him to do probably is to just launch the ball the, the length of the field, almost like icing and hot. Let him fight for it down the other end. Kills at, at time. At the very worst, they've got to bring it down uh, 100 yards to get back into their offense. Syracuse reset into the crease. Big save by Doherty. Picks it out of the air. There's your best goalie in Division I lacrosse making yet another huge save. Syracuse picks it up. This will be tough to save. It goes well wide of the goal. Carcaterra had an easy shot here. They've had good looks at the goal, but the defense is making the attack think, and they're a little giddy down there. They're a little nervous about the hits. Exactly. No backup for Syracuse now, costing them possession. The key to Doherty, he's a lefty right there. That Carcaterra shot is a goal on a righty goalie. It's to the off stick side. Watch the replay now. Look at Carcaterra's shot right in the stick of Doherty. He, he's got, you got to put that shot either low or to the off stick side. So he's going instincts there against what normally is a right-handed goalie. It doesn't work. This man, Doherty, standing up tall, carrying his team to a 4-2 lead with 2.40 left in the first half. Still uh, extra man. Maryland's got the ball, but it's, it's still Syracuse extra man. The ball boys are going at it. Huh? The ball boys were fighting. There. Watch. No, oh, I don't like that. That's terrible. Uh, doing fine. Feels good. Hope it, I think it looks good, huh? Okay.
We're back at Bird. Maryland leads by two, and some of the most dramatic moments of the game have happened when Rogier for Syracuse brings the ball all the way up. Maryland is letting him clear it. That time, Nimi stripped him from behind. Watch Roy Colsey now. There's no goalie for Syracuse. He hops in the net, finds a pipe, steps up. He's ready to make the save. His positioning's a little poor there. Like he wants to stay a little further back in the goal. I don't think he shows some guts, though. I'm sure he, oh, he's man. got no protection on. You see Rozier. He's got the, the chest protector and, and that uh, the throat protector. Not too many minutes of practice in that for Colson, but he's the gutty guy who leads the team. 16 saves for Maryland, only 7 for Syracuse. Here comes Kip Fox, but turned away by the tremendous speed of Cummings. So Cummings running step for step with Kip Fox. They like that match. Teams need strength now because they got it down to the offensive zone. So Maryland's basic philosophy clearing their cue is to give it to your speedster and let them go. Yeah, they've been clearing too much with their long stick defense. Give it to your fast guys. Give it to Evans. Give it to Fox. Make it easy. Now Look, there's no up. science to giving it to your fastest guy. And plus, Hill Gardner coming down has been a big key to them getting successful. The attack coming down to help, giving it to the short stick fast midfielders. That should be the key to success for them. They take the time now. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Maryland with a two goal lead, which is a little bit stunning. They come in as the fourth seed. Syracuse the third seed, but they were with Virginia and Hopkins. One, two, and three, sometimes one in the polls all year long. Maryland's got to move off the ball better. They're standing around and just watching each other. They've got to occupy defensively. So going a little bit unnoticed here, Q, is that they had a two-minute penalty and didn't get any goals from it. Not going to come up with a couple of big saves. No guard. Let's see if they take the time off the clock. Just saying, no way. I want the ball. Hill Gardner gets it checked out. Beardsley picks up the ball. Beardsley wants to go on the offensive end. Let's see how far he takes it. Now he's all by himself. He baits. The attack. Ball down. He's down on the ground. Can they get the ball? Watch out. There's no Beardsley. He's on the other end, but a big check by Whitten. He's still down. Here comes Nealon. This will be trouble for Syracuse. Four on three. Folks. Rocket. And he misses the goal. Backed up by Rogier. Another fast break opportunity just missing. Ryan Cummings did a good job hustling back in. Actually made it a four on four. Poor shot selection. Not that the shot was a bad shot, but there's no backup. In that situation, you're a attacker in front of the cage looking to score a goal, and you shoot, and the goalie's the closest to the end line. Use all the people when you're four on three. Use everybody. Here comes Syracuse. Fiedra, he's got it. Fiedra's such a key part of this team's success when they played Virginia. Finally lights it up. It's a one-goal game with 40 seconds left in the half. Fiedra's a guy who plays big in the big games. 93 when Syracuse won the national title. He had five goals in two playoff games this year. He had three in the semifinals, and now he's got one. He's one of the key guys. Beardsley poor defense. Solid. Exactly. Poor defense by Maryland here. You got to get back to the hole. You got to get open. Credit Beardsley with a nice long pass there. Maryland not hustling back to the hole. Look at Kip Fultz. He's got to be inside playing defense. He a finishes from point blank range. Toby Price facing off for Syracuse. Offsides on Maryland. You can't come out of that offensive zone until there's possession. Long sticks are in there for Syracuse. Chad Smith finally gives it up. 30 seconds left, plenty of time for a shot. They can tie this one up. Maryland worked so hard to get the lead. Syracuse can erase that with one goal here. Right now, Maryland leads by one. Closing moments in the first half. Oh, a shot that looked like it was stoppable. Tremendous accuracy by Licamelli, the new superstar for Syracuse. Licamelli continues his hot streak, and the Syracuse fans are loving it. Here's a guy who was cut from the Syracuse team as a freshman. Fought back. Watch the goaltender. He dips his stick. He drops it down low. Licamelli doesn't have much angle there. You can see Doherty guessing low. He, he was thinking bounce shot, and Licamelli just put it over his shoulder. This kid is playing with a lot of confidence, Licamelli. It seems like everything he throws towards the cage is going in. Game tied at four. Seconds winding down. Don't know if they'll have a chance to even shoot again. Toby Price picks it up. They'll get one more shot. Here comes Syracuse. Sullivan. Far side. Back to Sullivan. He's got it. Three seconds left in the half, and Syracuse nails it for the first one goal lead in the last 10 minutes. Three straight goals for the Orangemen. Two goals in 13 seconds. They'll take this into the halftime. We got three seconds left. Watch Sullivan. He gives the ball up early. He doesn't throw the man. Gives it up early. Caps it right back to Sullivan. 
slow slide by Elstrom, number 22 from Maryland, gives Sullivan that shot. Watch this shot again. Here's Sullivan, time and room, down low. They've had some success against Doherty recently. You talk about explosion on offense. Maryland had a two-goal lead with 44 seconds left, and Syracuse goes into the half with a lead. All the momentum, three goals in 41 seconds. Crowd loves the action. It's a one-goal game, Syracuse. Five to four, they lead. Maryland had gotten the two-goal lead after patiently taking their time. This game is as close as we expected. Teams going to the locker rooms. We have a great halftime for you when we come back to College Park. Standalone segment? Okay, out of commercial, back to at Bird Stadium. It's halftime at the Division I National Championships. Syracuse with a blistering three goals in the last 41 seconds, and they lead 5-4 to four over the University of Maryland. Joining me, head coach Roy Simmons from the Syracuse Orangemen. Those three goals have to have shattered Doherty's um, confidence going into the second half. Well, he's too good an athlete for that to be shattered, but uh, we got to him in a hurry when we needed to, and we didn't let him sustain that momentum that they had going. But uh, we're, we're hurting ourselves. Uh, my goalie's not shooting well today. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. What is this coast-to-coast -coast goalie thing? He's got more shots than some of my attackmen. <laughs> yeah, offense any way we can get it, right? It, it, it's entertainment any way you look at it. <laughs> Boy, what are you going to say to the guys going into the second half? Nice job. Let's keep it up. Keep the pressure on the, on the Terrapins. This is their backyard, and uh, I think we all got the jitters out now. And uh, the butterflies are gone, and, and now we'll get down to business. Thank you very much. Okay. Coach Roy Simmons from the Syracuse Orangemen. They lead by one slim goal, five to four at halftime. We have more coming at you from Maryland. Stick around on ESPN.
Yeah, it's a real stick with a pocket. Yeah. Hello, hello, you're right. I'm like, yeah, get Giving away free, free, free money, money at the end of the zone. Give me, I have not. Stats and then commercial. How long are we going here? That's it. They go to break. He wants to chat for a while. You want 90 seconds? This is the silver anniversary. We're back at Bird Stadium, the Maryland flag flying high and proudly as the NCAA celebrates 25 years of great lacrosse action. And it is just that way today as Maryland takes on Syracuse. Maryland lit throughout. And now the Orange with a 5-4 lead as they are introducing the 25-year anniversary team, the best of 25 years. And Quinn Kesnick, four-time All-American, and Hopkins, a few of the Blue Jays are out there. Some outstanding players out there. Scott Patrick-Lupo's last year's goaltender for Princeton, uh, one of the goalies selected. Well, let's take a look at the first half. This game was really going to the tempo of Maryland. They didn't have much possession, but when they did, they made it count. They had a big lead, a 4-2 lead in a low-scoring game. That's big. And then, in the last 44 seconds, Syracuse took over. Maryland played such a great second quarter until the last 41 seconds when Syracuse exploded for three. Uh, Mark Fietta got it going for the Syracuse Orange. You know, they're looking to get some scoring from their second and third midfield units, and they did. Well, let's take a look at some of the highlights. This is Fietta's goal. Here's Fietta's goal. He took a feed from Beardsley and beats Doherty low. Really poor defensive work there by Maryland, not getting back into the hole. That was Licamelli, had four goals in the semifinals, and he's got one today. And this is the last goal. With three seconds remaining in the first half, Syracuse getting into their transition game. Kavavit to Sullivan, and Syracuse takes all the momentum into halftime. And uh, what a break for them because they love the transition, but Maryland's defense really closing him down. Doherty has looked sensational. He did have a rough last minute, but really that was the defense allowing shots to come right in his face. Doherty has made about 16 saves prior to the end of that second quarter. I don't know what his exact stats are right now, but he's done a tremendous job. Maryland's got to pick it up a little uh, defensively, protect Doherty a little better. Take a look at the great defense for Maryland. This is Doherty stopping it between the legs shot. And Radabaugh has been their big guy on defense. Radabaugh has shut Casey Powell out. Powell, the highly touted freshman out of Carthage, New York. Watch the check right here over the shoulder. Whack right there. Syracuse defense, though, has three All-Americans on there, and they have been an impact. They've been sw swarming. This is Hans Schmidt making the takeaway check. We've seen Beardsley play well. We've seen Chad Smith very involved. And look at the physical play by Christian Fototopoulos there, number 27. We'll be back for more of our halftime in just a moment from Bird Stadium. Yeah, he, he's not here yet, but I'm sure he'll make it by then. Unless you want to try to get old Dickie Dell on. I don't think he'll be real happy, though. K-O-P-P-E-L. Yes. Thank you. 
Yes. Okay, how much time? And I throw back to a break, correct? Okay. The Division I National Championships over the NCAA Lacrosse continue for the men from College Park, Maryland, where Syracuse lead the Terrapins 5 to 4. Joining me at halftime, a very special guest, Ted Koppel from ABC's Nightline. Ted, what brings you here to Bird Stadium? Well, uh, I said I'd say it to you, Christy, so I will. I have never seen an entire lacrosse game until Saturday, and I was watching you guys on ESPN, and I thought it was such fun that I thought, hey, it's only a half hour away. <laughs> So I brought a couple of my kids and uh, we're up in the stands watching the game. It's a great game. Now you do have a bit of an emotional tie to one of these two teams here. You graduated from Syracuse. I do. I graduated from Syracuse 35 years ago and about the only thing I really knew about lacrosse until now is that we had one of the all time greats Jimmy Brown who played uh, who played lacrosse for us back then. Uh, but this really is I mean it's not brain surgery to figure out the game and it's a it's a very exciting game. It is a lot of fun. Did you play any sports while you were an Orangeman? I did. I played uh, soccer for Syracuse and uh, but back in those days if we'd had a crowd like this we would have thought we'd walked into the wrong stadium. I think some of these guys are surprised we have a crowd like this. It's a record setting weekend. It's amazing. You've got about 35,000 people here and uh, who would have thunk it huh, for a lacrosse game. Well we're really glad you're in the stands and I'm sure the Syracuse Orangemen are glad you're on their side. Thank you. Yeah, they need all the help they can get out of here. But I noticed you guys, uh, you know, one minute you're over there waiting for the waiting for the Maryland coach and two goals later. <laughs> right? You're fickle. Yes, it is. It's a fickle game. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot more fickle activity in the second half. Terrific. Look forward to it. Thank you very much. Ted Koppel has been our special guest. We still have more to come at halftime here at Bird Stadium. Syracuse leading Maryland 5-4 in the national championship. He chose to end the game. Where is she? She doesn't have him yet. There he is. Here he comes. Tan shirt. Do I talk over it? Okay. 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 Team member. The 25th anniversary of NCAA lacrosse, and you're watching it on ESPN. Syracuse leading Maryland 5-4. It's halftime. We're live at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland. Joining me now at halftime is a 25th anniversary team member, Gary Gate, also a member of three championship teams for Syracuse. You have to have some fond memories standing here right now. Oh, definitely. You know, this is a great place to play, and uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to watch uh, Syracuse and Maryland go at it. You know what else? You have another interesting connection because you are the assistant coach for the women for Maryland, and they won the NCAA lacrosse title there. Yeah, they had a great year this year. The, you know, the team really stepped up and uh, went undefeated and won national championship. Very exciting. 
So who are you rooting for? Uh, you know, I, either way I can't lose, but uh, you know, I, I got my old coach, Coach Simmons, uh, taught me a lot about what it takes to win, and uh, you know, you kind of got to back him. So I'm leaning a little that way, but it'd be nice to see uh, Maryland take both men's and women's as well. So either way, we're in. That's right. It would be a nice sweep. This could be an emotional game, though, for Coach Simmons, because there is some talk that he may retire this summer. Well, uh, I, first I heard of it was today, and uh, I hope he doesn't because he does a lot for the game, and he's one of the unique characters in the game and uh, keeps it the sport interesting. So I hope he sticks with it a few more years. All right, Gary, thank you very much for joining us at halftime. Well, we have this, the second half face-off coming at us, and Leaf and Quint will be calling the action. Leaf, back to you. All right, thank you, Christy. Gary Gate, finest indoor league season he ever had. He was the MVP. Philadelphia Wings won it. If you follow the coverage on ESPN2. It was exciting. First half stats in this game is Maryland tries to climb back from a one goal deficit. Syracuse leads. How are the numbers? Look at the shots by Syracuse. 29 to 18. Ground balls even. Faceoffs about even. But the saves from Maryland. Doherty has kept Maryland in this game. Extra man opportunities about even. Look at the scoring. We've had a lot of players score one goal apiece. No one in this game has two goals. Chomo, Hillgartner, Hahn, and Bullen one apiece. And for Syracuse, even scoring again. The two leading scorers in that team you don't see on that list. You don't see Powell. You don't see Colsey. They're getting ready to ignite for Syracuse. Kavanovic has been the catalyst. A lot of offense spread around. And the absence of Colsey does probably cause some concern for Maryland. He is capable of taking over game. Dickie Dell, first final for him ever. Maryland was playing a, a tremendous second quarter. So lightning struck here. Syracuse, three goals in the last 41 seconds. They had been shut out for the previous 20 minutes. And historically, quit. that's what Syracuse will do to you. If you give them a little inch in the middle of the field, they'll start running and really make you pay for it. Brothers, who has won six out of 10 faceoffs, gets this one. Ragged by three players. He comes up with it. And Chomo will settle down. Beardsley on him. Brothers, a real tough kid, weaving it in and out of traffic right there. Great a ball. He started on the faceoff wing on the offensive end. Long stick, number one defender. Both teams are doing that. Chad Smith for Syracuse is stepping up to play on the wing, as is Radabaugh from Maryland. Neil, double team, is in trouble. Here comes Brothers. A little bit of a seam. Gives it off, looking back door. Up top. Goal! Matt Hawks, the first player to get two goals, and what a great finisher he is, the freshman. 34 goals on the season. This play started right here with a flip. Nealon getting through the double team. Watch Jonathan Brothers come in now. He could shoot this, he could shoot, shoot it, but he's unselfish. He moves it behind the net. Syracuse allowing Maryland to pass the ball around the perimeter. Hillgartner finding Hahn inside. Credit Nealon dealing with the pressure, and credit Brothers with some fine, unselfish play. It ends up in Hahn's stick. He has been money in the bank for Maryland. Game tied at five, the first. 40 seconds of the second half. You know, Quint Hahn is very uncannily perfect at being in the right place at the right time. He really knows how to position himself. He waits for the play to develop. He knows his role is strictly a finisher. Rarely he gets, he doesn't get caught away from that crease, so he's always in position to finish. Nimi to be double teamed by Syracuse, and Syracuse comes up with it. Morrissey being ragged by Nimi. Morrissey all the way across. Cavalry could have finished it, but he couldn't pull it down. A little bit high to get credit to Nimi there. Nimi kept working Morrissey, kept working Morrissey, but feed was high. Morrissey has not been sharp for Syracuse. Powell has not been sharp. It's really been a midfield game for Syracuse. Gip Fox gets it out there against Whitting. Not a bad matchup for Gip Fox. Let's see if we can give him some room. He wants it. Whitting rides him out. Winnick's tough. He plays excellent defense with that short stick. He's one of the outstanding athletes. Only 5'10", 177 pounds. But he plays a tough team. Neyland against Fietta. Tried to get it back to his teammate, Andrea. The Andrea couldn't pick it in. How fast Winnick and Syracuse bring him down the other end. Powell was covered closely by Raider Ball. Powell says, give it to somebody else. Fatigue will be a factor in the fourth quarter. These teams played on Saturday. They only have one day's rest. Syracuse moving in front and just missed the six by six. Working defensively on DeAndrea. DeAndrea, the rather, and then Syracuse backs it up beautifully. DeAndrea's brother, Rocco's a goaltender for North Carolina. He's a guy you want to take to the net. Doesn't have very good speed, actually. Had a knee injury in high school. 
Great backup by the long sticks, and they keep possession. Beardsley comes across. Love this end of the field. Right in front is Casey Powell. A little bit low, he picks it up. Trouble. Shot. And a big block by the defense. Cozy couldn't get it. Here comes Maryland. McGuire all the way with Tomo in front. Got home. Goal. from Chomo, hat trick for Hong, and the freshman finisher puts Maryland up by one again. Watch the replay, one end for the other, La Chapelle, number six for Maryland with the steal. They get the ball up the field quickly. Nice look right there by Pat McGuire, finding Chomo down low, watch the fake right there. You can see it caught Rozier off balance, fell for the fake. Here's the tail end, Han with the fake, finishes near side. That play started with Pat McGuire. Syracuse gambling in the middle of the field, leaving themselves less uh, down a man on the defensive end, and Han capitalizes. Gambling instincts of Syracuse sometimes can burn them. And Maryland not hesitating when they get in transition to know that they have a man advantage going right to the cooker. Settled down, Casey Powell finally gets a matchup he might like a little more. Nimi now on Powell. Ball goes right through the Syracuse offense. Larson backs up, far side to Fiat. Fiat is so dangerous in the open field. Maryland puts Rada Ball against him. So Rada Ball sliding over Fiat when he's on the field at this point at least. So Rada Ball off of Casey Powell. Casey Powell thinks he likes this matchup. Powell came in, got a good shot. Graham Neme was on him. Let's see if they balance back. Now they, they do. do. They switch up. Graham Neme's really a long stick defensive specialist. He plays midfielders. That time Powell did a nice job penetrating. Missed the net. Again, when you're shooting against a superior goalie like Doherty, you tend to aim for the pipe, aim for one inch or two, instead of just shooting for the bulk of the net. Superstar. Licamelli took that one. Licamelli, a newfound superstar. And that was right into the stick of Doherty. Really got to test Doherty better than that. Field drying out, sun coming out. This game will get faster as the field gets harder. Syracuse again making it very tough for Maryland to clear. Maryland has to be patient clearing because Syracuse is being very effective at just double teaming and getting the ball back. Yet again, inside, Powell can't get it. He goes high with a shot. Roy Colsey has not been on the field yet in the second half. Number three for Syracuse. After the semifinal game, he suffered some dehydration. He took IV fluids after that game. He has not played yet in the second half. Syracuse gets a goal. That one will count. Game tied at six. Kavavit for Syracuse. So quick and so smooth around the cage towards the second goal of the game. Watch the replay. Here he is being covered by Elfstrom. They both went to high school at Yorktown. Elfstrom loses his footing. Cavendish finishes down low between the legs of Doherty. They played with each other two years at Yorktown. They won a high school state championship up in New York. Cavendish gets the best of them there, and he gets the bragging rights. Watch the reaction. Coach Adele has got to be frustrated in his defense that time. Elfstrom fell down, and the slide was too late. Two goals for Cavendish. He scored five minutes into the first quarter. For Syracuse, the first score then, he scores five minutes into the third quarter. First score for Syracuse in the second half. Tying it at one in the beginning of the game, tying it six here. Oh, Casey Powell redirects. Beautiful job. Now it's showtime for him. Showing his little post goal dance. Syracuse scores two goals in fast succession. They lead by one. The complete package, Casey Powell, Carthage, New York. The outstanding high school player in all of lacrosse last year. Watch the replay. This is Morrissey feeding Powell. Watch the quick hands. Doesn't waste much time. Doesn't fake. Shoots it right away. This play started with Phototopoulos. Photopoulos from Syracuse. Throwing that check. And there's Morrissey scooping it up. Here's the tail end. Again, see the quickness on that release? Didn't waste any time. He had to pull it to 180 degrees with it. Very, very hard to do. He made it look easy. Two goals scored within 15 seconds for Syracuse. Now they're back on top. 7-6. Syracuse again controlling the faceoffs. So they're using different people. Long sticks helping out. Kobe Rice. Nice ground ball by Ryan Cummings, the transfer from Johns Hopkins. He was covered, managed to get the ball in his stick and hold on to it. Impressive. Trouble there for Price. Kobe Price was double teamed. 
Throws the ball out of bounds. Maryland really on top of him. Udell giving some instructions to Graham Mimi. Coach Simmons with his assistant, John Desco, in the back right there with a white shirt on. Three face-offs in a row for Syracuse. Maryland needs to get effective clearing here so they can get some possession time. They're down by one. Easy clear for Maryland as they take it up. Bill Rule, double team. Watch out, here comes Neyland. Big save. Ball kept alive, but Hahn steps in the crease. Nealon gained an advantage right there. Off to the sideline, Wittick, 45 for Syracuse, slipped. Rogier was big. Huck jab. Oh my gosh, Dockery comes out on the line. This is a replay shot right now. Meanwhile, I was watching the live play, and what you missed was a sensational save by Dockery. It was one on one. But the big play you saw in the replay was Rogier making the huge save. Syracuse is starting to challenge every inch of real estate on this field. And that's that's they their want. style, exactly. They're going to get out, they're going to play, and if you can't handle that pressure, you're going to turn it over. Turn We've right seen here. Maryland now turn it over in a couple possessions. Please. When it doesn't work, however, Maryland's going to get their fast breaks, and whether they capitalize or not, that's the key to this game. Got to get good go. shots, and of course, Rozier coming up huge with Nealon's last shot. Nealon had to take that. It was a well-timed shooting opportunity. One goal lead, under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Syracuse and their defense, Chad Smith coming down, almost took a shot. Now they move it around. Marcy against La Chapelle. Still haven't seen. There's Roy Colsey now on the three. So Colsey number three, working inside. Now he comes out. He's got his help. Colsey two. Isolation. Maryland's uh, defender there. Bonani. We're stick defender. Syracuse showed unusual patience in the late stages of their semifinal game. Sullivan inside, feeds, and a goal by Kavovic. Sullivan very patient, and the cut by Kavovic well timed. Eight to six. Kavovic hat trick. Three goals. Watch him time it. Watch, watch the time here. Watch him come off the pick in the middle of the field, and then watch the accuracy on this shot. There's no way Dr. can make this save. There he comes off the pick. Look at the accuracy. La Chapelle, number six for Maryland, tried to help out. And the ball right in the corner. Nothing the goaltender's going to do there. He's moving one way, and the shot goes the other. Kavovic stepping up in the championship game. And he's doing it in a lot of different ways. He comes across the crease. He comes from behind, showing a lot of versatility. Two-goal lead now. Back and forth action for Syracuse and Maryland. Maryland opens up the half by scoring two goals, and then three straight for Syracuse. After the 8-6 to six game penalty, Cummings is going to be whistled for a holding violation. That's Coach Desco, the defensive coordinator for Syracuse. The heir apparent when Roy Simmons decides to hang it up. Take a look at Cummings. He's not happy about it in the penalty box. They've had a great combination going, John Desco and Simmons. Watch number seven now. Watch the one-handed check right there. It's either a slash or a hold. See what they call. And you can see Desco and Cummings upset. Maryland will have their third opportunity in an extra man. They are one for two coming into this chance. A minute penalty. And a minute. Be plenty of time to get a good shot. Right side now out at Bird Stadium. Shot goes past Kip Fultz, rather the feed. On the line by La Chapelle. Offsides will give it back to Syracuse. Yes? No. Offsides on Syracuse. Defender and attackman really towing the line. The call goes against Kavovic. Maryland resets. A little bit of a 3-3. Three, three. They're all out in front of the goal. Everybody can get a shot on the goalie, Rozier. 12 and 13, Fultz and Bowen are, are the shooters from the outside. There's a rocket, Rozier gets a piece of it and goes behind. Bowen can shoot, that's his job, he's a specialist. That's all they bring him on the field for. He scored the first goal of this game. 15 seconds left of a penalty. See if they can get one more shot. Trouble from behind, looks away, cross side, and look away feed, and that'll eat up the penalty entirely. Maryland still may get possession. Beardsley with a nice check inside against Whipple. He really let him have it with his stick. All even now, but Fultz has a little bit of an open field here. 
Combo looks in front. He's got somebody up top. Bowen. Bowen's going to go off the field, so they'll bring a fresh player on. Getting the extra man player off. Falks one on one with Whitty. Nice job defensively. Syracuse killing that penalty. Double team because of the substitution for Maryland. Falks got the speed. Can't get around Schmidt. Schmidt just chased him down. Here comes Beardsley. A little bit of a break. Catlin it though. Can't collect it. Maryland goes the other way. Really tried to thread the needle on that pass. Check. Going down a bound. Whipple picks it up. We can go out. Trouble now. Syracuse Schmidt fell down. Whipple, a little bit of space. Good time to settle for Maryland. Get the right matchup. Well, that was the kind of situation where Syracuse usually gets a shot. But Maryland, good aggressive stick checks. Ball back. Andrea. Against Whittick to switch. Let's we'll see that matchup. Fieta's got Nealon. Nealon's a very, very, very smart player. Nealon will not take the shot unless he has it. He's got great vision to give it up. He gives it up. Oh, behind the back of an open net. DeAndrea had an easy shot because Rozier came out of the goal and he just misses the 36 square feet. Not the play you want from that position in a game of this magnitude. He had time. He's got to have be patient inside. Make the right play. That's going to cost Marilyn Nealon. Great play to find him in there. He's got to capitalize. Pick up in midair. Fake. And a shot. And Rozier comes up huge on Chomo. Rozier looking like Doherty. The best against the best. That was the save of the game for Rozier. Huge. Keeping it an 8-6 to six game in favor of Syracuse. Five minutes left in the third. Two chances. Few, one of them open net. They just missed a shot. And this, this one where they steal it. Shots now in favor, of course, Syracuse. Quality shots. Those are two real quality shots. Later on in this game, they'll probably look to those plays. They could be deciding plays. Now comes in off the sideline, picks up the ball. Now he's got Nealon against him. He's got room. Watch out. Big save by Dockery. Both goalies playing sensational ball. Each goalie making unbelievable saves to keep their team in it. Mulsey, you know he's going to explode sooner or later. And he can't stay with him, and that ball goes wide. Casey Powell on that last play with a gorgeous split dodge. Just blowing by Nealon, and Doherty was up to the test with a kick save. Two kick saves in a row by both these goalies. They're hot. And Maryland with uh, a couple opportunities that we talked about them regretting uh, that they don't get them, that you don't get them very often. No, not a, not a quality chance like that. Syracuse controls behind. Doug Jackson has it. Doherty with 18 saves currently, so he is really being challenged by Syracuse. He'll end up with 20 plus if he wins or loses. Nalen checks from behind, tackled by Syracuse player Jackson. And a penalty now. It'll be a delayed call. Maryland might get a free shot. Can they keep the ball going? Masa Bell with a great fake. He's got to keep it going. If they drop it, they'll lose their chance. And they do lose it with that bad pass. Going to be a foul against Jackson for Syracuse. Jackson's mother works at Syracuse University. He was a former ball boy during the early 80s. Coach Adele on the sideline. Look at the extra man opportunities. Maryland, one for three. The last time they had an extra man, they didn't even get a quality shot. Syracuse, one for four on their extra man. And Syracuse early in the game, but two the penalty, they got no goals on. So both defenses really establishing themselves. Just puts a little bit of extra pressure on every goal. Syracuse used to be playing in the teams, high teams. This game will be in the low teams if it gets there. They start in the 1-3-2, moving around. 2-3-1 from the top. Now it looks like a 1-4-1. They've got four guys in the middle. They can't find Hong. Good stick checks took it away. Run it out again. Two guys up top, three in the middle, one behind. Jumbo sneaking. Jumbo trying to work it into a tight space. Q didn't have much of anything. He just tried to cram it in there. Syracuse doing a nice job here. Very aggressive for a man down defense. They'll come out and play it. They've done a good job. Patopoulos, Beardsley, Smith, Schmidt, and Fietta. Give them a lot of credit. Team's all even. Look up Smith. He's coming right down the field. He wants the ball back. Schmidt wants it. Schmidt is staying there. A top shot. And it goes wide by Fietta, but backed up by Kevovic. Fietta had him beat on that shot. Doherty not getting there with his stick. 
Take a look at Mark Fietta. He's one of the keys to the Syracuse team, especially if Colsey is not at full strength. And it appears as if Roy Colsey is not going to play as much here in the second half. Dehydration problem more serious than they thought. Possibly. We don't have the official word on that. Roy Colsey is, by most people's account, the best midfield position. He earns first team All-American this year. We just got the mouse kick at halftime. Players on the field right now, also first team All Americans, the new listing. Rick Beardsley for Syracuse and Ray DeBall for Maryland. And their goaltender, Brian Doherty, voted first team All American. Well deserved. Captain that backs it up. Syracuse keeps it alive. They have a two goal lead, two minutes left in the third quarter. Lee Bell's mode. Quick guessing it. Christy leaves on the sideline, and we are getting close to the fourth quarter with Syracuse playing very patiently when they have to, and they're running when they need to. Yeah, the key here, when they control the ball on offense, it rests their defense, giving Beardsley, Smith, and Schmidt, and, and Fotopoulos the ability to have more reserves, they can get out and play more aggressive defensively. They check by Maryland, ball still loose, and they can't get a great save by Dougherty. Maryland almost killed themselves with keeping the ball alive, but Dougherty comes up and saves them again. They've had trouble clearing all day, and they continue to have trouble. Ball loose, the great hitting, aggressive play, and Maryland pays dividends. In front, Maryland trying to control it, can't do it. Had a good chance for Bordy, but Bordy couldn't collect it. That ball is full of grease. Beardsley finally. Beardsley giving it off to the wing. Lecomelli inside the Beers and he couldn't pick it up. Now Beers would be tired. If Maryland can get it down, they'll have trouble getting the long sticks back. Do they have any help? There they go. Off to the races. McGuire, he can't collect. Finally, they get back. Beersley chugs back in. Now Hillgardner's got Beersley. Beers has just run two sprints. Hillgardner, oh, Beers is saying, come on. I think everyone's tired at this point. It seemed like the ball was square there for a while. No one could catch it. It was unbelievable. And Beersley came back to challenge Hillgardner, even though he ran two sprints and said, come on, buddy. Hillgardner now. Beersley against him. Trying to find him close at 40. 40 had tripped. Evans showing good speed. He's as quick as anybody on the midfield. Great ground ball, man. Evans, 10 ground balls in the semifinals. Crawford coming out to the midfield. He's really an attackman, so Vicky Dell using that four attacking scenario. And here comes down the middle, a middle substitution for Maryland. Wide open in the middle. Let's see if he can stick one. Whipple to the wing. Oh, a great save by Rozier. Well conceived. Crawford gets the shot. They substituted from the middle of the field. They got their shot cue. Rogier has been superb. Syracuse on the back of the great goalie. Rogier maintains a two-goal lead at College Park. Fourth quarter coming up. Okay, so I'll welcome back and then interview and then throw to leave. Correct? Yeah? Oh, you want to wait? Dan Murgott, he shaved it off last night, though. I saw him earlier today, he did shave it off. Are we still doing this? Yeah. That's okay. Me the team. Okay. Oh, 25th anniversary team. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. We don't have an all American uh, graphics bill for that, do we? No. Back up Goldie Lafferty had to go to the bathroom.
We're back at College Park, record crowd, getting ready for the fourth quarter, the 25th anniversary, and this is the 25th anniversary team for NCAA lacrosse. Take a look on attack. Tom Cafaro, Mike French from Cornell, Eamon McEnany, Cornell, Nelson, the great feeder from Syracuse, Mike O'Neill, outstanding athlete for Hopkins, and Jack Thomas back in the early days. Midfield, Jonathan Reese, who starred in 1990 for Yale, Frank Urso, the four-time first-team All-American, the Gate Boys from Syracuse, and Brad Cotts, Dressel, Kowalczyk, and Schneck from Hopkins. And then on defense, a lot of Hopkins players, starting with DiTomaso, Greenberg, Petra Milo, maybe the best ever. Hoffs, North Carolina, Kane from Cornell, and Morrow, a recent grad of Princeton. And in the cage, the goaltenders, Bacigalupo, two-time national champion for Princeton, Mackesy in the 70s, Sears from the early 80s, two national championships, Federico with three national titles for Hopkins in the late 70s, and the great Larry Quinn, probably the best out of that bunch, 84 and 85. Twice MVP of the tournament. Twice MVP of the entire season. Twice MVP of the entire season, and also the goalie of the world team last year for his third time. That's right. Face off 9-7 in favor of Maryland. Here, almost a shot. Hill Gardner had a right-handed shot, took himself like out of the picture almost, went to the left hand, and didn't have much to shoot at. You remember early, Maryland was giving Rozier a lot of clears, and I thought it would tire him out, but he's played better as this game has, has moved along. His best quarter was the third quarter. He was sensational, and that was unusual. Chomo challenged Beardsley. Chomo went one-on-one -on -one with Rick Beardsley, took him right to the goal. He didn't get a clean shot because of the stick check, but interesting that he would challenge him early on, maybe a different tack offensively. The best way to challenge Beardsley is to go right at him, go right at the goal. If he makes a mistake, you're going to score. The worst thing he can do is jog around the perimeter and let him pepper you with his check. Ripple doing the same thing. And takes a shot and goes wide. So offensively, Maryland with a much different strategy here in the fourth quarter. They're not moving the perimeter. Looks like they might be going one-on-one, -on -one, doing a little bit more vertical offense. Stats through the third. Look at the shots. 45 for Syracuse, only 26 for Maryland. Ground ball's about even. Face off, favor Maryland, and saves. Both goalies played outstanding. 19 for Maryland, 13 for Syracuse. Maryland against Toby Price. This is another good matchup to see if Maryland takes it to the cooker. Gets inside. Around the back and can't get it to fall. Tomo backs up. Backdoor shot. Whip ball. Can't get it either. Rozier is really everywhere he has to be. He is playing at the top of his game. Two goal lead for Syracuse. Fox against Cummings. Speed against speed. Ball down. Cummings watch out behind you. Here you go. Toby Price. Good speed there. Whipple, the attackman down there playing defense, and Whipple pushes him off the field. So Whipple was caught playing defense. Gets a check right at the right moment. Well, defensively, Nealon did a good job hustling, but Radabaugh, the key to that play, he came halfway. He made Price make a decision whether to shoot or whether to pass to the teammate. Price seemed confused and threw the ball out of bounds. Radabaugh playing with, with Price's mind as he attacked. Maryland again having trouble clearing. Syracuse eating him up, making him pay for it. Great double teams, Cummings coming in, big hit by Fox to the head. That'll be a minute. And the ball picked up by Radeball. Fox went up with his elbow to the head. That would have been a good hit probably if it was low. Watch this, gets him up in the head area right there. Oh, that is brutal and blatant. Nice call by the officials. Cummings, not the tallest player, 5'8". You know, here was a kid, played for Johns Hopkins last season, was a fourth string midfielder. A year later, he goes home to Syracuse where he grew up, and now he's playing in the national title game. His style definitely more suited towards Roy Simmons than towards Tony Simmons at Johns Hopkins University. Could be the game of his life right here. Two goals ahead, Syracuse is the chance to make it. This team has a chance to make a three. Doctor right there. Pressure on him again. Halsey starts at a 2 3 1. Each team, one goal in four attempts. Now they rotate two behind. Designated shooter with Colsey on that side. Oh, they tried to get it back. Colsey with really a bad feed. He's in a scoring opportunity. He tried to skip a man, and there was nothing to. No lane for him to pass to. Now, Maryland did a nice job getting their sticks up, forcing that pass high. They've got to clear it, though. They've had problems all day here. McGuire gets it back to Dougherty. He's looking for help. The attack's got to come up and give him a little help. They break out. They're being defensed very closely. Hillgardner being defensed and cannot get it. Man-to-man -man defense all over the field for Syracuse. Schmidt not giving Hillgardner an inch. Coach Adele has got to develop some kind of strategy that will enable him to clear the ball better. Maryland again blows it clear. Roy Simmons. Pace 
pace, favoring Maryland, but time of possession definitely in control of Syracuse. They have ridden with ferocity. Back to the extra man play. They had a chance to blow it open, but they didn't. They give it back to Colsey and company. Now Raider Boss got a lob shot up. Here come the Turks. Brian Reese. Reese sees Hahn. Hahn's open up top. Trumbull finds Hahn. Oh, he couldn't get it inside. Actually, Hahn was higher. He tried to get it to Bonelli. Bonani, rather. Bonani came across with the cut. He went over top of it. Chad Smith for Syracuse did a nice job. Chomo likes the four speed. He's got 104 career assists coming into this game. That's fifth all time at the University of Maryland. Chomo went to high school at St. Mary's, which is in Annapolis. About a 20 to 30 minute ride down the road. About four minutes from my house. Rozier, candidate for MVP. He has been unbelievable, matching Doherty in the second half when he's had to. Maryland now trying to break up the clear themselves. Nealon picks it up in the middle. He's being dragged by Marcy. Now Nealon's got some space. He's got a matchup he likes. Dishes it into Chomo. Chomo immediately looks out to the crease. Maryland's a little too tight in front of the case. They got to create a little space in there for Hahn. Too many players in front of the goal. No space for that feed. They were set up with some long sticks and defensive people. Now they'll balance up with more of an offensive look. Andy Sherritts. Always left, not too far up the road in Baltimore. The 13th on defense. Now Colsey gets a chance to play a little defense against Folks. So the speed of Folks against the great athletic ability of Colsey. Get our get Folks just ran right by Colsey. And they're going to get it to Syracuse. Good hustle by Beardsley, but Rozier with the big save right there. Folks blew by Colsey. Colsey looks to be really suffering from that dehydration. Watch the hustle by Rick Beardsley. Known for his flamboyant play, but there he sells out for the Syracuse Hard. Doing a great job of playing under control, Beardsley is. Hahn picks up the loose ball with a great stick check, and that was replaced, a return by Syracuse. Again, it's Beardsley with the loose ball. Colsey picks it up. Let's see if he's got enough room for him. Scoreless in the last, how many minutes was that? 16-30, Maryland hasn't scored. Rozier's been outstanding. Syracuse has scored three in a row. Colsey getting hammered. Loose ball push. The National Spelling Bee, the oldest and largest program celebrating academic excellence. Thursday, June 1st, 3 p.m. on the Deuce. Academic excellence in the Spelling Bee and also, of course, here, a very big part of the programs of both Syracuse and Maryland. Syracuse with a two-goal lead. They've really kept Maryland from getting the good scores, and the big reason is Rogier. Rogier has been sensational. He was okay in the first half, not bad at all. He has been unbelievable in the second half. Shot by Syracuse. This is the point in the semifinal game that Syracuse was so impressive. They protected their lead, they rested their defense, Rogier came up with a big save. Let's see if they can do that again, controlling the ball in their half field offense. They're known for running down transition style, but if they can kill a minute, two, minute or two every possession here, they've got a great chance to get their sixth national title. Holsey again working out front. Big save by Dockery. Maryland's had the shots this quarter, 6-0, before this last flurry. Interference with the goaltender there. That's a play on call. If Maryland gets the clear successfully, they let them go with it. They didn't. Fieta was in the crease and interfered. That's Watch the replay right there. there. Colsey with the shot. Dockery say that's the interference right there. When the goalie's in the crease, you can't make contact. See LaChapelle put up his hands. LaChapelle nailed him a little bit. Push the guy in there. And he puts his hands up. No touch. I don't know if he's with the man, but he's certainly begging forgiveness. Bright sun, quite a different look to this field than the game, than when the game started. It was overcast, a little bit wet. Dockery, 20 saves now. He had a personal record, 23 in the semis. Maryland working one-on-one, -on -one. good stick, wide open. Here comes the rocket. Oh, they go across. Rozier has made them think now about their shots. Farmer had a great shot. He goes all the way across the front of the mouth of the goal. Out of bounds. You got to take those shots with time and room. A 12-yard shot's a good shot. Rozier getting to the head of Farmer. Farmer looked for Hillgartner on the far side. 
A little too much mustard also. That pass was sizzling. Too tricky. You had the shot, go ahead and take it. Give Rozier your best. That's what the coaches, I'm sure, are reinforcing in Farmer. Nine minutes left, two goal lead for Syracuse. They've allowed a lot of shots in, of late on Rozier, but he has been tough. La Chappelle playing defense against Kavovic. 47 to 32 in favor. Kavovic going to the goal. He's got three goals. Just missed. Fans on the far side had a great angle there. You can hear the oh. Missed that one by about three inches. Maryland hasn't scored in 17 minutes. We should thank Rogier for that. Fieta locking up against the short stick defense of McGuire. Jarrett's. Marcy out to Fieta. Fieta would like to get a little more space there. He takes one. He finds to the net. Doctor, you can't believe it. There wasn't much to shoot at, but Fieta found it. Nine six up by three. His second goal of the day. Nice placement here, and he uses this defenseman as a bit of a screen. Doherty opens up that inside. You'll get a nice angle here. Watch Doherty come off the pipe just a bit. He can't believe it went in. He's upset. That's one that he has been saving in the semis and the finals. That could be the difference in a game like this. Watch it again. Fieta, not much of an angle. I think it got a piece of Doherty's thigh and then deflected into the goal. Fieta is a kid who has really stepped up in the playoffs. You've got to be impressed the way he's played big in the big game. And that shot wrapped around the defense. Hard to read for a goalie when you wrap it around the defensive player. He has been sensational when they've needed him. Bolsey being marked beautifully, not a factor. Fieta's the big guy and has been. Ball loose. Price. Maryland continuing to get possession, but giving it back to Syracuse, or Syracuse taking it back to them. Watch out. In close shot on Dagger, and a score. Morrissey. Confused Dockery a little bit at the last moment. After checking behind him, takes a shot, a four-goal lead for the Orangemen. Morrissey, the opportunist. He's the most veteran attackman on this Syracuse team. 40% shooting percentage, does the job here. Shows some versatility as a sophomore last year had 32 goals. This year, he's got 30. Watch the replay. Notice one thing, the stick protection is key. He realizes that he's being chased. Doesn't bring his stick up until the last second. And Dockery looked like he guessed low on that shot. Watch it again. He sees the defense there the whole way, protects his stick, brings it up into the shooting position, and gets rid of it quickly. Had he hung his stick there, he would have lost the ball. Jim Marcy, a goal to assist. Maryland's got to look for a timeout pretty soon. Syracuse has scored five goals in a row. And they lead by four. Maryland scored the first two goals of the half. Hahn gets two. And since then, Rozier has tightened up. And Syracuse really starting to add to their offensive lead with great transition in the midfield. Syracuse is on an 8-2 run. Scored the first of the last three goals of the second quarter. Then Maryland had two, and then they scored five two. The Gamelli, superstar now, gives it off to the wing of Kavovic. Maryland's going to have to start to, or just to step up the intensity a little bit as far as possession. In front, the Gamelli! Huge goal, his second of the day, five goal lead. Nick Licamelli, this is a guy that Roy Simmons will be talking about for years to come. Cut as a freshman, four goals in the semifinals, two today, Syracuse with six unanswered. Watch the replay. Watch the placement to the off-stick side of Doherty. It seems as if Syracuse now is kind of waking up to the fact that Doherty is a left-hander. Look at the placement in the off corner there. No way you're going to make this save. Again, Kavovic having a sensational game from behind the goal. Licamelli on the right-handed cut, little jump shot action there. Nothing Dockery is going to do. Licamelli, what a story. Meanwhile, back in the faceoff, five-goal lead. What about that timeout you mentioned? Why wouldn't Maryland stop this run? They only have one left. You have three in the, in the game. You have to have one each half. 6-0 run, 18 minutes and 37 seconds. So. They've got to stop it somehow. La Chappelle picks up the pass. Can they clear it? No, Syracuse all over him. And a whistle. Syracuse starting to get now a little bumped up. Sullivan, the senior from Scarsdale, 21. Not a stranger to physical contact. 
Kid's got great speed. Watch the replay. Now LaChapelle makes a nice play. The ball will come loose. There's one hit by Sullivan. Watch him again. He'll go back for two. Oh. Well, that's shot by McGuire. McGuire should go to the box. And look how pumped up. Sullivan's fired up. Senior looking for his second title. These seniors for Syracuse, they've been here before. They won the title once. They've lost two playoff games by one goal. Coach Adele got to be upset. No timeout after that Syracuse run. And now, now McGuire's in the box because of that Babe Ruth type swing. You know, if, you, if you don't use your timeouts when you have to, the game's not going to mean anything with three minutes left when you have your timeout in your pocket. Definite frustration foul by that man right there, Pat McGuire. It'll be another extra man opportunity for Syracuse, and the hole is getting very deep for Maryland. Under seven minutes to go. They've got to come up big defensively again. Maryland start, or Syracuse starts in a 3-3. Everybody out front, and rotate Kevin behind. This is their sixth opportunity. They only scored once. They're one for five. That's the man. Inside, close finish, and the defense is starting to lose belief. Cavalier Syracuse getting open all over the place. Jackson gets one right in his face, and the defense is not sliding as aggressively. They are, I think, are losing a little bit of heart. Yeah, they were standing around a bit too much there. Jackson with the goal. Cavalier with another assist. That's Jackson, James Will DeWitt, sophomore, right there, tiptoeing the crease. Poor defense. Maryland standing around watching the action instead of making plays. Jackson's the all-time leading scorer at Jamesville DeWitt, which is a suburb of Syracuse. They produce some great high school players. This kid is a future star for Syracuse. He's only a sophomore. Maryland now faced with the unenviable task of making up six goals against the great Orangemen. And they are getting loose and having a ball. Seven unanswered goals in less than 20 minutes for Syracuse after Hall scored two to open up the second half. 20 left. This looks like an impossible job for Maryland. They finally tell you to advance the ball. So now with Maryland getting the ball, they're going to have to try to clear it. Looks like the wheels are starting to fall off the cart for Maryland. Unforced error there on the clear. It helps them with just overthrowing Radabaugh on the near side. They've really had a tough time clearing, and some of those you just have no fault for. That is unbelievable. All day it's killed Maryland. But you gotta credit Syracuse, there's a lot of hustle from this attack. They can score, but they're playing a more complete game today by making it tough for Maryland to clear. Now you're gonna see a different kind of Syracuse team. They came with great respect for Maryland, rightfully so. Dougherty's been so tough. Now they've got a six goal lead. They're gonna start showboating a little bit because this is a showtime team. And with a six goal lead, they can start to loosen up their offense. Yeah, they're gonna play a little ring around the Rosie here, zip the ball around the outside. But Maryland overcommits, they'll go to the goal. Dougherty with a huge block. He doesn't know where it is, right behind him, finally picks it up. Outlet, if you're a Maryland player, you've got to have somebody ignite a little bit of a fire. They need a shot and a goal in a hurry. Transition to the wing. Hill Gardner. Tough defense by Schmid right there. Great body positioning, using his legs. That'd be a foul against Schmidt. Well, no hasn't scored since the first three minutes of the half. Schmidt jogging to the penalty box. Really, the, the least flamboyant, the least talked about defenseman for Syracuse, but he gets the job done. Very respected within the lacrosse community from the coaches and his and his peers, the players. Well, one for four. This will be their fifth attempt. Fox doesn't waste any time with that rip. Shomo behind. Maryland obviously needs to score one here to get back in this thing. Bullen on the right hand, far side number 12. Not a lot of ball motion here. Now Bullen's got it. Hans inside. Good Fox is not taking a great shot there, but at least he's doing something. That's Here not going to go. Syracuse. Coming in, Chad Smith. Ball back down on the field. They're getting faster off the pipe. That would have gone for Smith. A follow-up shot and a goal. Kavlovic getting out of hand. Four goals for Kavlovic. Seven goal lead for the Orangemen. And Hugh, it's almost like when the field started drying out, 
Syracuse seemed to get a little faster and really has opened up the offense. They've had the legs here in the second half. They're making plays. Coach Simmons before halftime said, hey, we're about to play our best ball. And they have, watch Chad Smith now. He will get the rebound here and ping the pipe. Watch him ping the pipe. But Kavovic's in the right place at the right time. Potential MVP, Kavovic, four goals. He's got a number of assists, three assists right there, seven points for Kavovic. Yorktown High School, tremendous programs, Central New York. This kid's doing the job. And somewhere in that voting for MVP, you've got to think about Rogier because when the game was tough, it was eight to six in that area, Rogier came out with two or three point blank saves, and then his team just started adding on the goals. Eight straight for Syracuse. And then, seven goal lead. Nealon. Yes, yes, working out front. Syracuse being very patient. Good position by Sullivan. Ball goes out of bounds before Beardsley can get it. Sullivan playing some tough D on the near side. That's Nealon. Look at the shot differential. Syracuse 55 has got it by 21 shots. Greg Nealon, the senior from Maryland. Still a blue collar, lunch pail type player that Coach Adele loves to have at Maryland. Wears his heart on his sleeve. He gives you all he can. 5-0 in the fourth. That's a big difference. You see Maryland is right with him. Maryland scores those two goals in the third. In the first three minutes of the third, hasn't scored since. Rogier gobbles it up. Kip Falks, at least he's taking the shots. I mean, his shots have been not the highest percentage shots, but he wants the game to turn. Might be trying too hard in that regard. Those are very savable shots. Low to low all the way. rozier has got his radar on those easy. Under four minutes. Syracuse now comfortably in control of this game. Nobody has won five national championships. Roy Simmons' team has. This would be number six. No coach has won five. So your, your alma mater has a little bit more than that. Those are all the history of the Bronx. Hopkins, one of the best. Roy Colsey, haven't heard much from him, but his team's winning, and that's all he cares about. He certainly gets a lot of attention. Thank you. Enjoying it more and more as the weather gets hotter and the field gets drier. Great physical work. Leka Melli has become the new star. Call coming up against Maryland. And Leka Melli looks sensational. Crowd favorite also out of West Tennessee High School, which is right near Syracuse. The number three seed has won the last three championships. How about that? Princeton, 92-94, Syracuse, 93. And guess who's number three seed this year, folks? We got it. The Orange got that match right, spot. That's probably why Roy didn't mind it at all. He did like it because it gave him a chance to come in as an underdog against Virginia. He got that far, and he did. He had to beat Princeton. He had to beat Virginia. And now he's got to beat Maryland, and he looks to be in good shape to do it. Timeout called by Maryland. 2.55 left. Syracuse looks like they might win this one. Stay with us. I just want to read it before I read it. You gonna give that? You gonna give that sheet to Dennis? They say 80 here, Leif. Nearly 80,000. What's next year's final four? A full house celebrating the 25th anniversary of NCAA lacrosse, and they came in record numbers, 26,229 today. A championship game record, beating the old one by about 2,000. And overall, this championship weekend, close to 80,000 folks upping the old record by 6,000. This, folks, is the highest attended championship for NCAA, except Division 1A 
football until this year. Now, only basketball for a one-day event beats lacrosse in the NCAA competition. Two for six, an extra man for Syracuse. They get another chance here. Cav of it, can't beat Doherty. This game was going the tempo of Maryland the whole way. Rozier stepped up and played tough when he had to, and Syracuse has just added on goal after goal after unanswered goal. Maryland keeps the ball down on their offensive end. Nimi stays there with a the long stick. Nice stick work by Smith inside. Really a team effort for the Syracuse defense. To hold Maryland, they were averaging 15 goals per game. To hold Maryland to only six. J.C. Powell wanted to be off to the races. He was playing a little bit of defense. Both teams just not sure where they're going to put the ball. Whipple, He's got a player behind him wide open. There he is, Todd Evans. Drops it down to Nealon, and he pokes it home. Finally, Maryland gets on the board with goal number seven. Two minutes to go, it's not going to be enough. Transition goal, back to within six. Nice play by Whipple, sensing the pressure, realizing that he had some teammates substituting. Hillgartner, unselfish, gets it to Nealon, who fires it past Rozier, who has been outstanding for Syracuse. Nealon, senior captain, first goal today, 21 on the season. He had a goal in the semifinals. Tough first, kid. First goal in 25 minutes for Maryland, and that's been the story of the game. It was a very close game. Hahn scores the first two goals in the first three minutes of the second half. Since then, Rogier and defense locked down on the attack of Maryland, and Syracuse comfortably ahead. What a year, though, for the Terrapins. And the obvious hats off to the Syracuse Army, who do it like nobody else. One of the seniors for Syracuse, Sullivan. Gutty player, they've stepped up. They lost two games early in March. Since then, they picked up the intensity in practice. They've gone undefeated the rest of the way. Roy Simmons says he wasn't quite sure if this was a good team, a great team. He said they maybe it's a mediocre team after Virginia sh shellacked them in the dome. But they came back and have looked good. Bounce, shot, and a goal. That again was Nalen, so Nalen gets two in a row. Maryland gets a little bit closer, back to within five, still over a minute to go in the game. Mathematically, next to impossible. Watch the replay. Folks to Han, to Nealon. Nice passing. That's typical Maryland this season. A lot of quick, short passes, and they finish when you give them the opportunity. Nealon gets two goals in a row toward the end of the game of this half. Han had two to start the half. In between, it was all Syracuse. Cavavit had three in that little run. Lincoln had his, Morrison, Powell, Jackson, Fietta, all scoring in that important second half run. Now Maryland gets uh, Pasqualina in there to face off. Patopoulos is going to be whistled for a slashing violation. A little kayak action. They call this check a kayak because you choke up on the stick, much like you do when you're rowing a kayak with equal distance between your hands and either side of the stick. It's going to be a whistle for a foul there. Coach Adele really should be commended this year. He's done an outstanding job. Potential coach of the year for Maryland. Really very limited hopes coming into the season for the squad. Yet they've played from start to finish the season. They've competed in every single game. We talked about it, 76 last year. A great job. And that quickly, Hahn puts it back in. Oh, they're making this score respectable. A couple more, and it's going to be a little scary for Syracuse. Four goals for Hahn, 13 to 9. They're back to within four with 50 seconds left in the game. So they've scored three in about two minutes. Here's Hahn, highly recruited Georgetown prep. Georgetown and Loyola of Maryland wanted him. Maryland got him, and Coach Adele was really forced to put him in the lineup early this season because of his success that he had in practice. That's really against his philosophy of playing freshman players. Four goals today, 36 on the season, sets a freshman record here at Maryland. And Hugh, I don't think he's going to have that freshman don't play rule anymore, I would be my guess. He's got some great productivity out of freshmen, with it and on the top of the list. Toby Price gets a huge face off with 40 seconds left. Maryland fighting for the ball behind the back from Ray to ball. They'd like to get another win on here. 
board. He gets it checked out by the aggressive defense of Schmidt. Easy, 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 easy. Timeout called by Syracuse. Good call, brother. Syracuse, timeout. So 20 seconds left, they call a timeout. NHL action continues Thursday night on ESPN when the Chicago Blackhawks take on the Detroit Red Wings in game one of the Western Conference Finals. Catch all the excitement, 7.30 Thursday night on ESPN. Well, Q, we've had timeouts called in every game that wasn't a game in the last minute for some reason. Seems to be a fad. I, I, I think Cummings called that timeout. I think he was afraid of losing possession of the ball. He turned to the official, and I think he called timeout Syracuse now, savoring the moment. You know, the Syracuse program really came into prominence with the, the building of the Carrier Dome uh, in the early 80s. They won the national title in 1983 at Rutgers University in what was an outstanding game that came back from seven goals down in that game, beat Hopkins, played for the national title 84-85, won three in a row with the Gate Brothers in the late 80s. A lot of people thought that they'd fall off after the Gate Brothers graduated, the two Canadians, but they haven't. They've won now two titles since the graduation of, of Gary and Paul Gate. Matter of fact, with a couple of different breaks, this could be, Roy Simmons reminds us, a four, or not a three-peat, a four-repeat or whatever. <laughs> They've lost two, this senior class has lost two one-goal playoff games in their career, one of them being an overtime game last year to Virginia in the semifinals. You the know, other one, a last second They're goal two goals away Princeton. from being four in a row, that's right. But this is the preeminent program in Division I lacrosse. They have set the standard, of, especially offensively. They're a crowd favorite with great style, great flair. And they are the new Division I champion. 12 seconds left. Casey Powell stepping out of that box. You see that, that line right there. With less than two minutes, you got to keep it in the offensive box. That'll do it. Syracuse wins the 95 championship. celebrating as they should a tremendous day for them they played patiently they played with flair they played with excitement they've done it all this year in 1995 they played such a smart game their goaltender rosier came up with a big save their defense was swarming held maryland to six goals midway through the fourth quarter maryland got a couple of garbage time there's coach Adele around his squad and syracuse celebrates their sixth national title Roy Simmons and Syracuse should be congratulated. They did it the hard way. They beat a great Virginia team, came in here and beat the best defense by most people's count in Division I. They are the new champs. They win by four. We'll be back in just a moment from College Park.
the 25th anniversary of the NCAA men's lacrosse program and what an excellent way to wrap up a wonderful weekend. The Division I championship goes to Syracuse. The final score, the Orangemen 13, the Maryland Turpins 9. Joining me now on the field is the coach of the Orangemen, Roy Simmons. Roy, it's an emotional win for you. The only coach in Division I to win six national titles. Seemed like when the field got drier, your team got faster and the offense more uh, potent. We grew up this season. We really did. We had a slow start coming out of the gate, but we caught fire. A lot of heart, a lot of generic names. We just put it together as a team, and uh, we just didn't look back starting the midseason. This is your 25th anniversary as a head coach of Syracuse, and there's been a lot of talk about retirement. No, I, well, if, if I can contribute to the game somehow, and if the kids still hear me, I'll remain as long as my health holds. But, uh, you know, last year at this time, my dad was with me, and I lost him last summer. And I know where he is. He's watching today. I had to apologize last year. I got knocked out on Saturday. And I know he'll celebrate with me tonight. He was the coach ahead of me. He was definitely with you today. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a wonderful time for all of us down here on the field covering these NCAA Crush Championships record crowds. And, Leaf, I know you feel the same way. Well, Christy, I've seen the Syracuse team win over the last 12 years that I've done these championships. Been fortunate enough to do so. Quinn, I've seen them win every way possible. They've had the big superstars. They've had it on the defensive end, they've had it on the offensive end. They always do it with flair, but they always do it. This is a complete package of Syracuse from top to bottom, goaltending, defense. I haven't seen a Syracuse defense like this ever. Smart attack play, and they were well coached. You know, they really improved as the season progressed. They played their best ball in the playoffs. Our hats off to Syracuse. It's been a fantastic weekend. Maryland needs to be congratulated as well. For Christy Lee and Quint Kesnick, I'm Lee Felsma. Hope you enjoyed our championship weekend. The 25th anniversary for NCAA lacrosse has been a record breaker. Goodbye, everybody.